All righty. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome to the game room. I'm Luke the DM. It's my job to kill everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight for our first ever live session of our West Marches 5e D&D campaign. Um, welcome aboard. This is super exciting. This is something we've had in the works for a long time, and I'm super excited to finally get this up and running for you guys. Um, I've introduced myself. Uh, we have four lovely players joining us. So, uh, guys, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, I'll start with Rudy. Oh, hi. My name is uh, Tanuki Rudy. Uh, I've been Dungeons and Dragons since 1998. And uh, what are you playing tonight? Oh, I'm going to start off nice and generic as an Isaac, the very intimate fighter. But assuming he lives and he gets up in levels, he's going to turn it to something uh, rather interesting and fun. Excellent. All righty. Uh, next up, Wolf, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name's Wolf, Wolf Among Sheep. Um, I've been playing D&D for a few years now. Uh, Tanuki actually introduced me to the game. Nice. Um, I'll be playing Shiana. She's a elven Shadar Kai uh, wizard, hoping to make it past level one. Try Nothing to get that to done for you. <laughs> All right, Jay Milio. Speaking of cool cats and kittens, hi, I'm Jay Milio. Uh, I've only been playing D and D for about eight months now. Started last August. Uh, this is my third campaign that I'm on. Uh, I am playing Shadow in the Whispering Wood, known as Shad, and she is its Baxi. Very cool, very cool. And last but certainly not least, uh, Deacon, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yep. Uh, hey everybody, I'm everybody Deacon. I've been, I've been playing D and D for close to oof, twenty-three years now. Wow, twenty-five right. somewhere around, around there. <laughs> going back <laughs> well before third edition, so we're all nice. going back. Very and cool. I'll be playing Brother Gregor, the Human Variant Cleric. Very Where it goes cool. From there, I haven't decided yet. All right. Uh, and just so you guys in the chat know, I'm going to be mainly focused on uh, running this game and focusing on the players here, but we do have a wonderful assistant behind the curtain. Uh, Wee Woo Wagoneer is going to be basically running the Twitch side of things for me. Um, and if you guys in the chat have any questions uh, about the game or mechanics or kind of, you know, rules or anything like that real quick, uh, we will be able to help you. If it's something super pressing, we can grab my attention. I'll answer it for you, but we're going to try to keep that to a minimum. Um, but, uh, yeah. Alrighty. Um, my introduction's pretty much done. You guys ready to rock and roll? Alright. Let's go. Friendship. So, our adventure tonight begins in the free city of Kadoria, located on a lonesome peninsula. It's a city that's been exist established for roughly 75 years or so now as sort of a, a safe haven for refugees from the Great War between the Holy Empire of Dios and the majocracy of Lexigrad. Um, the city was founded on the principles of inclusion, freedom, and extreme laissez-faire capitalism. Uh, the city is ruled and governed by a council of guilds, these powerful companies, artisans, uh, merchant guilds, that all have sort of bought in to create a safe place and a, a haven for business and for uh, basically anybody that can buy their way into the city. Um, you all have throughout your lives at some point, and for whatever reason, call it destiny, coincidence, or whatever, um, have heard of a new startup company starting in the city of Kadoria known as the Tea Leaf Adventuring Company, uh, seeking mercenaries, adventurers, uh, muscle for hire, and uh, general laborers, task workers, messengers, uh, an assortment of various odd jobs um, for a pretty alarmingly decent pay rate, uh, which probably grabbed most of your attention. Um, so... Serendipitously enough, you all arrive in the uh, fabulous streets of the city of Kadoria. Um, a smorgasbord of color and different types of people of different races and backgrounds. You can see there's merchant stalls, there's 
uh, colorful banners streamed across. There's, uh, it looks like sort of a patchwork of various different types of buildings and architecture and styles and uh, materials that are all just sort of thrown together. Um, you manage to find your way to the main sort of strip, almost the equivalence of like the Las Vegas strip known as Avandra's Alley um, that cuts, uh, takes a sharp corner uh, after the central square to uh, Mer uh, Merida's way. And on that exact corner, that sort of that storefront property corner is uh, you guys all arrive simultaneously in front of a large, almost like a mansion. It's very imposed, imposing um, uh, mortar and thatch building uh, that looks like it's probably been revenated several times in the last decade. Uh, and outside of that, you can see this beautiful, large uh, wooden sign painted in gold leaf, excuse me, that says uh, the Tea Leaf Adventuring Company. And on the bottom of it is a little logo that has a glass of red wine that sort of has a dagger um, kind of resting, leaning against the stem of the glass. Uh, there's a beautiful gated property. You can see there's beautiful flower beds uh, in this sort of front lawn. Uh, there's fruit trees kind of growing in this, this fairly sizable uh, lot of land. Um, and it kind of seems like a little strange to you, like in the middle of this urban metropolis, there's this sort of like very peaceful, tranquil, um, like very uh, abundant growth of, of uh, foliage and greenery here. Uh, there's a wrought iron gate that uh, is left partially ajar for you, and it's maybe about a 20 foot walk or so to these massive sort of arched uh, double like dark oaken wooden doors for you. And you can see there's a little uh, little lion uh, door knockers resting there. Uh, one is a door, not a door. Nobody? Okay, I'll just be quiet. Well, if nobody else is going to, I'm going to go up to the knocker, grab it, and give it a good... a good Little. knock. Doof, doof, doof. You hear the, the, the sound of the knock resonate inside this, this large mansion, and that's really the best way to describe it. It's, uh, it looks like it's about three-story building. Um, you're not quite sure how old it is, but you know that the city's been around for 75 years, so maybe somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and the four of you wait a minute, two minutes. What are we done out here? This is all very, very rude of them to have me waiting like this. About three minutes go by and there's no, no response yet. Um, perhaps we should just, um, go in? After you, my good sir. At this point, I'd like you guys to describe your characters for me. Now that we have the four heroes standing here, uh, what is your what do your characters look like? We'll start with Deacon this time because he went last. <laughs> All right. So, Brother Gregor, I uh, actually don't remember what I put his height at. Crap. Uh, either way, fairly tall human, completely short, shaved bald head, um, nice crimson beard, kind of like mine is just redder. Um, Battle torn chainmail, and it that still has the uh, tabard from the Order of the Scarlet Sun hanging off of it. Warhammer holding on one side, shield on his back. Very cool. Uh, Jay Melio, you want to describe your character? Sure. So, uh, for those of you that don't know, Tabaxi are basically humanoid sized cat people. Um, so she is, uh, she's kind of got the leopard skin going, so it's the very light tan with the black spots all over it. Um, she's actually rather short for a so she's only about five feet tall. Um, she's mid-30s or so, but kind of a motherly type creature, you know, very loving and warm and cuddly, just don't get on her bad side. All right. Wolf, go ahead and describe Shiana for us. So Shiana is, she kind of looks like a typical elf with the pointy ears, um, but her skin is really, really pale. Um, her eyes, 
you can't really see where the iris and the pupil meet. They're all just kind of that dark color. Um, her hair, one side of her head is shaved, uh, long white hair that kind of goes back over one shoulder. Um, she wears what looks like plain black clothes that don't have any sleeves. Um, Friendship. She is wearing tattoos uh, sleeved on each of her arms. Um, one arm kind of depicts um, undead rising from their graves. And on the other arm, uh, it looks like the same scene, only the undead are turning to dust as a raven flies over. That's pretty badass. All right, I'll dig it. All right, and last but not least, Isaac. Isaac, well, Isaac is young, perhaps just cresting into his 20s. Uh, he's got average features that maybe decent looking, maybe not. Just looks like he had a very wealthy life. Not many calluses or blemishes on his skin or his hands. Uh, he's wearing rough and leather armor that has a uh, an engraving of Cyric on the left pauldron. It looks like he did his best to like scuff it up to like hide it, but it's still kind of holding true. He's got a whip hanging loosely at his side, and he just kind of looks really out of place and uncomfortable, but making the best of it. All right. So as you four strangers are kind of sitting here eyeing each other down, um, you hear from behind the door a complete just bumblefuck of these these rolling steps that sounds like crashes you hear something glass shatter and then silence and then the door slowly kind of creaks open and from behind it you can see pokes out ahead of um a red-skinned tiefling he appears to be um young put him in his probably early 20s he's got this sort of shaggy uh dark blue almost black hair these horns that kind of curl around like a ram's and bright golden pupilless eyes. And he kind of gives you this, this very apologetic smile as he pokes his head around the door and just kind of Hi. Can I can I help you guys? Uh, we're here for the D Leaps Adventure Guild. Oh, oh, you, oh, and he swings the door open and kind of like gives like this like quick frantic look around and he kind of takes a deep breath, wipes his forehead. And gives a, an attempt at a very flamboyant and graceful bow, which comes off a little silly and clumsy. He goes, welcome, adventurers. Um, welcome to the Tea Leaf Adventuring Crew. I'm Amnesty. You guys can call me Amy. Um, I am the doorman here. Um, awesome. This is super exciting. Great. I'm very happy to meet you guys all. Um, okay. Uh, you, so you guys are here. Did, did, you, you guys are here to... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I have to remember. Okay, yeah, um, um, um. Are you, are you, are you new? new? Yeah, hi, sorry. Um, I, th this is my first real job. Um, I, uh, why don't I introduce you to, um, the, the Lord and Lady of the House, and, uh, they'll, they'll do a, a good job at getting you guys started. Great. Okay, if you guys need anything, I'm Amy. Um, I'm here to help. Um, oh boy, I'm nervous. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, follow me. Follow me. And he leads you um, and kind of like turns on a heel and starts like power walking down this long, elaborate hallway um, that leads to another kind of similar large, maybe about 12 foot tall, uh, kind of curved wooden double door that seems to lead into like a bigger chamber. I suppose I follow. All right. To you. Better to do. All right. Uh, I mean, as much trepidation. All right, and I will uh, bring you guys to what you see. Ah, stand by. I'm standing by to stand by. All right. Oh, so uh, the doors open, and Amnesty sort of holds the doors open for oh, you uh, to reveal this massive, open. elaborate lounge area. You can see uh, it's a massive chamber, probably close to 120 feet square um, with this large roaring hearth what appears to be um, some sort of like notice board or a large prominent, almost like a bulletin board on the right hand wall. There's a large banquet table set um, and a staircase that sort of leads up and wraps around to the higher uh, two floors. 
as you enter, it seems you've caught the inhabitants a bit unawares. As you can see, uh, there's a few individuals in here kind of frantically preparing for their first arrival of adventurers. Um, what strikes you uh, first is you can see um, sort of sitting at the front desk, uh, frantically organizing papers and they're flying everywhere, um, is what appears to be a halfling standing maybe a little over three feet tall. Um, kind of blondish hair, maybe starting to fade into like a gray or a silver, uh, dressed in uh, very fanciful and uh, elaborate and flamboyant uh, leathers and armors uh, that gives off sort of an air of wealth and authority, but also some function. He's got this very uh, stylish kind of three pointed, almost like a Jack Sparrow style hat that he's currently like fanning himself off with as he's like frantically looking around, doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. Uh, you also see um, sitting next to him, sort of like propped up against the desk, is another halfling, a woman. Um, you can see she's got sort of uh, like a darker kind of a Mediterranean skin tone and this like fiery orange hair that almost seems to move and wave like fire without any sort of ambience. Uh, she is completely... Uh, like swagged out in all sorts of decadent jewelry. She's got this uh, sort of strange flowing, but beautiful orange and purple kimono. Uh, she's got like a strange looking peacock feather in her hair that looks like the colors were inverted, like negative. Uh, she's got these like large earrings that are sort of dangling and touching her shoulders that appear to be some sort of teeth. Um, she's got like rings. She's got um, what looks to be like a falconer's glove on her right hand and kind of like fogging around in the air around it is this strange fox like creature that also seems to be decked out in this very sort of Native American, almost tribal style jewelry. Um, and she seems to kind of just be casually um, just sort of casually looking around. You can see her flicking a finger. Um, and as she does so, you can see objects are sort of moving and organizing. Uh, dishes and plates are kind of stacking in place and making the table. Um, you can also see she seems to be, have some sort of control over um, dozens and do dozens of these small, spectral, uh, almost ghost-like animal creatures that seem to also be helping sweeping floors, um, arranging light fixtures above as they kind of float and fly up there. Um, and this woman kind of seems to just have this this aura of kindness and sweetness and authority, but also uh, this sort of this stern kind of control over the situation where the whole scene seems chaotic. She seems a little more grounded. Um, sitting at the banquet table is uh, the fourth and final uh, figure you see, and a third halfling, um, younger, probably you'd give her the equivalent of maybe mid twenties or so, um, with the sort of same blondish hair a little more sun bleached as her father uh, sitting there is with her feet kicked up on the table with sort of a, a small dagger kind of picking at her teeth is a third halfling woman uh, dressed in sort of rather scantily clad leathers. Um, and you can see she has this, this plunging neckline and you can see this broad array of tattoos across her chest and kind of up her neck onto the side of her face. That appears to be this black kraken or squid like creature with the tentacles kind of uh, fanning out and up the sides of her neck. Um, sitting behind her is an absolutely gigantic snow-white wolf that sort of seems to be kind of slumbering uh, with its arms crossed and its head down, just kind of like sleeping behind the chair. Uh, this wolf is easily over 200 pounds, uh, probably close to five feet at the shoulder. Um, you would estimate if it was to stand at its full height. Um, as you see all this chaos unfold as you open the door, as Amnesty opens the doors, uh, you can see Amnesty kind of gives a little, <clears throat> and you can see, uh, the halfling gentleman kind of quickly folds and finishes what he was doing, puts his hat back on his head and, uh, good day. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, Tea Leaf Adventuring Company. I am Sir Reginald Tea Leaf of the Kadorian Tea Leaves. Uh, welcome. Please, please come in, come in. Uh, and he kind of gestures for you to enter and walk into this this vast chamber. I enter the room, but near the back. All right. 
I walk right forward, kind of in the center of it all. I'm going to stay as far away from that wolf, and I'm just going to warily just keep my eye on it and just be like, stay, stay. Mm -hmm. And I'll stroll right in, park my my rear on a couch. All right. Um, There are a variety of different, like, lounging chairs and tables, and there's that large banquet table. It seems like there's... It seems like this this building might have one point been like a tavern or some sort, and it sort of has that central lobby feel. Uh, question although, is your original. I'm assuming as an aristocrat and purveyor of fine arts, and by the uh, symbol of the wine glass I saw in the front, do you have any available? Oh yeah, I'm terribly sorry, terribly sorry. Um, refreshments, please. Um, amnesty, take care of that. And Amy kind of like looks panicked and nods and runs out into like a, a door uh sort of behind on the right that you can only imagine leads to some sort of kitchen or pantry um reginald kind of chuckles uh welcome to our home uh i've introduced myself i am sir reginald i am the uh, proprietor of this establishment um it was funded primarily through my personal funds and my family and also uh through the aid of my darling wife here may i introduce you to he kind of <clears throat> clears his throat uh, this is uh, the daughter of stone and fire, the savior of the Obsidian Isles, lady of Fort Calum, and the high priestess of the Conclave, my darling wife, Marigold. And you can see she kind of uh, pokes her head up and meets you, and her gaze is piercing. You can just sense this sort of, not necessarily hostile, but definitely authoritative presence behind this young woman. And she just gives you a warm, gentle smile, kind of shattering that facade of of hardness and she snaps her fingers and that little fox creature that had been kind of uh frolicking about as well as all of the other spectral fey animals all simultaneously kind of slurp back into her her glove so you can see there's a small like a jade stone on it that they all kind of swarm back into suddenly she kind of gives you a smile uh welcome everybody uh thank you for for joining us i'm marigold streamstep um former adventurer myself i've since retired but i'm here to help out my darling husband as well as um my my children here that uh wish to to propagate further help the cause and you see uh she kind of gives you all a once over and really gives each of you a, a th- thorough scan kind of giving you an eye it, it, you kind of feel that like shiver down your spine as if she's she's reading into your soul as she just kind of gives you all a a good look not necessarily in, again not not in a hostile way but just in a very cautionary way as she's doing this i just want to kind of lean against the wall and kind of uh like i'm casually leaning against it but i'm just hiding the emblem that's on my shoulder all right um Reginald sort of steps up and says, Selena, are you going to introduce yourself? Kind of looks over towards the uh, the halfling sitting at the banquet table. And you can see she kind of <sighs> kicks her feet down, kind of chucks the dagger behind her, which wakes up the giant wolf who kind of stirs from his slumber. And uh, she wraps an arm around it, her this wolf's neck, climbs up and sort of mounts on top as the wolf kind of walks over towards you. Hey, sup? Uh, yeah, I'm Selena, their kid. Uh, what more do you need to know? Marigold kind of looks at her daughter and gives her a very stern look. And she just kind of, like, shrugs. Um, anyway, Reginald picks up again. Uh, we've, the four of us, this small little family, uh, have taken it upon ourselves to start this adventuring guild to, uh, again foster uh, a sense of adventure a sense of daring and questing and uh helping the better people i i I thought i was more prepared than this i'm sorry um yes we're trying to make a profit as well as as gain some notoriety here in kadoria as you as you well know money talks here and although my family is quite wealthy i'd like to establish something for myself um so me, my wife, my, my daughter, and her boyfriend have taken it upon ourselves to begin looking for, for, for odd jobs, for, for labor, for work, for, for deeds that need doing. And 
we also need adventurers to uh, to accomplish these things. Uh, as uh, I myself have retired, as my wife has, and uh, Selena and Amnesty have been through through quite a lot themselves. But they've got quite a bit of experience under their belts. I'm sure they can offer some helpful advice to to new recruits such as yourselves. Forgive me, I I'm terribly sorry. Um, I've done all this blabbering on. Uh, please introduce yourselves to me. Um, as new applicants, I'd like to know uh, a little bit about you. Uh, you there, uh, the one in the back who seems to be hiding from 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 Admiral. Don't worry, she's a she's a sweetheart. She won't bite. And you can see Selena kind of wraps down and snuggles and scruffs the the giant winter wolf. And you can see he kind of like <laughs> starts starts uh, loving it back. Uh, my name is Shadow in Whispering Woods. I'm a uh... Part of the Ashnesium Thieves Guild, and I'm here looking for work. Our guild has fallen on hard times, and I need to find some way to support it. You've come from quite a ways away. I have. The tea leaves have great renown in our area in Ashnesium, as being very accepting folks that make a great glass of wine. Dragonberry Crush is very popular in Ashnesium. Right now. I'm sorry. You need. You mean the the red dragonberry? I must yes, sorry, red, red, forgive red. me. Um, <laughs> yes, ah, a lady of, of quite taste. <laughs> um, you there, chuckles. What what is uh, what's your what's your story? He kind of points to you, uh, Isaac. Oh, that's what I say. We're all chuckling. <laughs> uh, um, um, well, I, I'm just. My family's going through a bit of a turmoil in Drachmere right now, and I'm just here to. Uh, Wait till it's the simmer, to, you know, goes to a boil and then back down to a simmer or stops boiling altogether. Just, you know, just vacation. Very well. Uh, young lady. Yes. Your story. Well, I just. And she kind of stares off. <laughs> I'm just kind of into, you know, arcane things. And it can get kind of expensive. So I'm really just here for the money. As you say this, the door uh, bursts open and you can see Amnesty comes back uh, carrying a tray, like a silver platter with uh, like six or seven glasses of wine that he seems to be trying to keep from falling over as he kind of like turns and with his tail kind of whips the door shut, comes down and like plops the platter onto the front desk and kind of like waits and watches as all the glasses kind of shake for a little bit before settling and out spilling. And it's, uh, wine's here. I immediately uh, did I... go over and get two glasses. All right. So I'll I didn't... walk over, grab a glass and go, you're really new at this, aren't you? Yeah, um uh yeah, sorry. Hi. Um this is like my first job. And you can see Selena on the back of the the large wolf kind of says, "Oh, you're doing great, Schmuckums," and kind of blows him a kiss. And he kind of starts blushing. And an even darker shade of red than his naturally red tiefling skin already is. And he kind of stands back with his arms folded behind his uh back and kind of bows his head a little bit respectfully. Um did 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 I did I overhear someone say arcane? I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak out of place. I just, um, and, and Reginald sort of giggles a little bit. No, 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 Amnesty, it's fine. We're all friends here. I did mention the arcane, yes. He immediately, like, elates, and his face brightens up, and you can see those golden eyes kind of flare a little bit. Just, oh my gosh, we're going to have so much to talk about. I have so much to teach you. This is going to be great. I love the arcane. I'm a, and he just, like, blabs on and kind of, like, reads the room for a minute and kind of stutters out a little bit uh we'll 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 have to talk yeah great Sh sure and he begins to sort of pass out glasses of uh red dragonberry crush to, to whoever wishes to partake none for me thank you i don't drink on the job <laughs> very astute excellent and uh you back there sir i apologize i haven't heard your your name and your story yet oh that's quite fine and down the glass of wine in one quick swallow. Ugh, it is phenomenal. Never die hard, do they? <laughs> I just put it back on the platter. 
Uh, I am Brother Gregor of the Order of the Crimson Sun. Um, my order, it's like, we've done what we can in the Inner Kingdoms. I've brought my way out here. Let's continue what we can do. Very well. I'm unfamiliar with your order, but I'm interested to learn more about it. Anyway, I've dilly dallied for far too long. Um, I, as of right now, uh, the Tea Leaf Adventuring Company has accepted their very first contract, which is rather exciting. Um, we're hoping to uh, use our networking resources to gather more notoriety in their work, uh, but uh, forgive me for saying this, but you have to start somewhere. So we're starting um, with a relatively, shall we call it, simple task, but one suited for adventurers such as yourself. Uh, I'm sure you guys will uh, be quite suited to the task and complete it with uh, excellency and expediency. And you see uh, Marigold just kind of <laughs> giggles a little bit. Darling, just tell them what they have to do. He kind of looks over at his wife and kind of smiles. Says, yes, yes. Uh, forgive me. I can be a little bit long-winded. No, times. you're fine, sir. Continue. It's refreshing. Our first uh, contract from the Tea Leaf Adventuring Guild uh, is uh, to aid a fellow guild here in Kadoria, known as the... Uh, the Association of Artificers and Alchemists, uh, nicknamed AAA here in the town, um, they have uh, have a shipment that they're trying to pick up in uh, a town to the northwest of here called Silvertown, small village mining operation. Um, they'd like the company to, uh, to acquire and return uh, some unspecified goods. Uh, they'd like it back here in the city within a week. Um, unspecified, so how we know what we're getting? Will be marked? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Amnesty, and he kind of, like, snaps his fingers, and Amy kind of, like, panics again for a moment, runs into another room, and is back within ten seconds with, like, a, a pamphlet of folders and, like, tied with a string, this, like, giant kerfuffle of, of paperwork, and he kind of, like, flattens it down and sorts through it and goes, ah, I got it, got it. Yeah. Um. Here's 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 the writ. Here's the writ, sir. Um. And he hands it over to Reginald, who takes it and um, kind of reads through it again. Yes. Um. We've got the the signature of of authenticity here from uh, AAA, saying that um they've already paid for the goods uh and it's to be delivered to the the Silvertown Mining Company for acquisition. Okay. Seems straightforward enough. Um, the company has, uh, in in order to facilitate this quest, uh, will be providing a cart with four uh, draft horses for your aid. Um, Silvertown, uh, and he kind of like pulls out a piece of parchment and grabs um, uh, a quill and an inkwell and sort of like hastily draws out a map for you guys. Um, very, very crude. Um, this is... Kadoria here, and he kind of draws like a small peninsula, and on the coast there is Kadoria, and a little ways away he draws um, an X, and he goes, and here is Silvertown, and he draws like a dashed line connecting the two, um, and you note he also scribbles in uh, sort of a, a swiggle to the northwest in between Silvertown and um, and Kadoria. This this swiggles. Uh, so yes, just follow the main trade road to the north and then to the west to, to get to Silvertown, uh, acquire the goods and deliver them back here. Um, I would avoid, if possible, going through here. This is the, the Howling Woods, um, quite uh, infamous for dangerous creatures and the like. Uh, but if you stay to the trade roads, um, you, you, you should avoid that, that trouble. Um, it's about a three days journey to Silvertown and three days back. Uh, the, the the association would like their goods delivered within the week, so that gives you a day spare time, which should be plenty. Is there Ready? a contact at the Silvertown Mining Company that we should be giving this specific package to? Yes, excellent question. There's a dwarf by the name of Scud. It's a rather unpleasant sounding name. 
Uh, but yes, speak to Scud. Uh, he works for the Silvertown Mining Operation. Um, and he will uh, deliver the goods for you. Uh, it is of the utmost importance that these goods are returned within the week. Uh, we want to make an excellent impression on uh, the uh, Association of Artificers and Alchemists as they are quite influential here in Kadoria, and uh, a partnership with them could be quite lucrative for us. Okay. I suppose we should get a move on, then. No time like the present. Lead us to the stables. All right. Um, uh, Reginald kind of goes to stand up, and Marigold just kind of puts a hand. Kind of. Uh, don't worry, honey. I'll, I'll show them. She sort of stands up and kind of just gently beckons. Follow me. I'll lead you to the back. And she leads you... Um, through out another door down another hallway and you can see there are about half a dozen or so doors on each side um you get the, the sense that there's a lot of various chambers and bedrooms and storage areas within this 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 building and uh as she's walking she kind of doesn't turn back but kind of calls out to you and just says uh funny enough this building actually used to be a brothel um Almost sensing your curiosity. Um, my husband acquired it through um, a rather stroke of halfling luck, I guess. Um, it used to belong to a, a, a former trade company here in Kedoria, but um, they fell on some hard times, and so he acquired it for a very decent price and decided to start up this company. Uh, just this way. And she kind of leads you. Um, and you can see there's... Uh, a few large kind of fortified windows on the, what you can presume to be the rear of the building. You can see a bit of sunlight is being led through. She kind of opens up the back door into this courtyard. And you can see it is uh, all that the front of the, the, like the front facade of the building was demonstrating, except amplified to the extreme. There is a, a small grove here of, what appears to be almost like a rainforest. There's beautiful blooming flowers everywhere, uh, bits of uh, small shrubberies and fruit trees uh, just sort of scattered around the central courtyard. There's a small peaceful pond with ducks kind of just gently floating there, uh, butterflies and other insects and songbirds kind of just floating around. And in the center of the courtyard is this massive towering tree, which you realize you didn't notice before from the front of the building although the top of the tree is clearly tens of feet higher than the tallest point of the structure itself catches you as curious as you're all get oh go ahead sorry can i do like a perception or an arcana check to see if this tree is magical in some way i i'd say give it a nature check nature okay yeah first roll of the night guys mm-hmm how are we going to do? Uh, did that roll? Uh, there we go. There we go. 17. Um, you get the sense here that everything here is natural, which is strange. Like, there's no sort of auras or buzzing or vibrations here that gives you anything strange, but the, the perception that, that you, you gather there's something magical about that's maybe hiding this place or obscuring it from view from outside of this courtyard, but the plants themselves are completely natural. Okay. As you're all kind of standing up and admiring this massive, uh, probably about 10 feet or so diameter at its thickest uh, base in the trunk, you hear this like, you f actually hear and feel this giant rumbling sensation in the courtyard that kind of causes you all to immediately uh, take guard. And Marigold kind of chuckles for a bit. And from kind of through the, the roughage in the, the foliage comes this massive 12 foot tall uh, creature standing on its hind legs. Uh, it's got four arms kind of coming through uh, six eyes, three on a side, this giant maw with these huge fangs and sort of this rough, leathery gray skin, almost like an elephant or like a rhino, comes just barreling through, kind of looking at all of you and growling. 
and Marigold just kind of puts up a hand and goes, shh, coconut, it's fine. It's fine. Relax. And he kind of stops and lays down and starts, almost like a dog, starts like rolling as she kind of like scratches him in between the eyes. Uh, sorry, I should have warned you. This is this is Coconut. He's a friend of mine. Uh, he won't hurt you as long as I'm here. But if I'm not here, just be careful. He can be a little... He likes to play. Just... Um, what was I going to say? No, I got nothing. That's later. <laughs> Um, anyway, sorry, uh, your your horse and carriage, yes. Um, go on, Coconut, and she she flicks her wrist, and from out of uh, that weird gauntlet that she seems to be wearing, the almost falconer's glove, spawns this little fur ball that she takes and throws, and you see Coconut just go bounding and leaping like a dog playing fetch after it back into this wooded area. Um, she kind of giggles again. Just silly boy. Um, and she leads you through a sort of meandering forest path in the middle of this this grove to a small shack where you can see um a horses uh four horses hinged hitched to a very nice uh functional simple carriage uh wait oh wait to she goes already then um is there anything else you require that i can do for you really quick or uh I'm good. Go to place, get thing, bring to people. Sounds easy enough. So it'll probably be any be anything but. You've got some sense to you already. You like a fine adventure yet? I'm sure it'll be fine. We've got this. I have the utmost confidence in you. Uh, very well. She kind of uh, looks at to drive these things. I can ride a single horse. Not so much about pulling a carriage behind it, but I can see what happens. I've never done any carriage work in my life, so I will sit in the back. I'll I'll see what the worst I can possibly do with this is. Mm -hmm. I suppose I'll sit in the back. All right, so we've got... um, Let's see. Let me do a little tinkering here behind the screen. So we've got, um, let's see. So we've, uh, Brother Gregor's driving. And we've got uh, Shadow also up front. Is that correct? And then we've got Isaac in the back and Gianna in the back. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. Excellent. All right. Um, And you guys set off uh, through the crowded urban streets of Kaidoria. There's a gate that opens up that leads you onto actually uh, Merida's Way uh, that will lead you sort of south to the outer wall and wrap around to the north gate. Uh, So whoever's driving, uh, Brother Gregor, I'd like you to roll me an animal handling check, please. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. Um, Especially it's... mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly the DC average, just what I'm good at. The DC was 10. Uh, these are very well-trained horses you gather very quickly. And uh, although you immediately realize that you have no idea what you're doing, it seems like the horses almost know the way and uh, are able to dodge and avert traffic as you're wandering through these these sort of meandering corridors of the free city of Kadoria. And you made it manage to make it out of the city uh in the better part of about 45 minutes or so without without incident. You're doing um, amazing, Brother Gregory. You're a natural at this. Like Alvarman knows it's like it's mostly the horse doing the work. <laughs> um as you guys exit the the giant walled city, um you head out north uh, along the, the main trade road, which is uh, starts off fairly wide. And as you travel throughout the day, um, you can see eventually what is like a cobblestone road begins to sort of fade into more of a dirt path. Although still well-traveled, clearly, uh, you gather. Uh, this is a main trade highway to this, this free city. Um, the, the state of repair as you guys travel, the better part of a day seems to seems to fade a little bit. Um, 
unless there's anything you guys want to do on your first day of travel, um, I will time skip forward and say that your first day's travel and night go without a hitch. But if there's anything you guys want to do, any conversations you want to have. I hope uh, it goes with a hitch. We're in a wagon. <laughs> no crappy puns here. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, we're at the rear of the horses. There will be plenty of crappy puns here. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll spend the first night contemplating whether or not I want to walk. <laughs> All right. I will enjoy not walking because I'm not used to such peasant activity. And for the record, the, the wagon is covered. It's almost like a like Oregon Trail style Conestoga wagon so that there's sort of a uh, front two seats, there's a flap that can open back to look behind you, and then there's the cover, and then another back flap. So the two of you, um, Isaac and Shiana, are kind of obscured from the outside as you guys are traveling. Is there any, like, ale back here? No, it is completely empty. That is a crying shame. Uh, that was a kind horrible of decision. Mm -hmm. Some kind. I just I just drink the uh, forget juice to uh, forget. They did ask if we needed anything before we left. You probably should have mentioned I, it I before. I thought it hey? just came standard. I mean, quaff, oh, quaff, this drink I call Nepente. I just need it, always. <laughs> Otherwise, I might remember what's going on back home, and we can't have that. No, no. Or what I've got myself into, which is even worse. <laughs> Do you feel like sharing? Nope, not at all. I just want to make sly references about it. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, I, I can't do something with anything. <laughs> all right. Um, as you travel, you, you get the sense that this is, you do see throughout the day, you do see other caravans, uh, lone travelers, groups of people traveling in either direction, um, along this main trade road. And you get the sense that this is fairly well common, uh, fairly commonly traveled. Um, and for the evening, you do find a small kind of a campsite where it seems that, uh, travelers come and go as necessary. It seems like a safe spot to stay for the night. Um, People kind of, you know, take the caution of keeping their distance and, uh, you know, they're wary of strangers, but it seems pleasant and safe enough. Um, as you guys wake up on the second day of travel, uh, any change to the seating arrangement? Are you guys comfy where you are? Nope, I'm all spread out back here. I'm all right. If he's spreading out, maybe someone else would like to be back here with him. <laughs> I just he's like laying back and he's just got like kind of doing the lying down captain's pose. Mm -hmm. And it is it's fairly I think safe. I'm good up front. I'm I'm good up here. Yeah, All I right. wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to drive the horses. It's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh brother Gregor, go ahead and make me another animal handling check for your second day of travel. All right. Hey, that's much better. Yeah, you're starting to get the hang of this. Yeah. Um, it seems that with the slightest touch of the reins, the horses, you know, are pretty pretty well behaved, pretty well trained. They have and you're able to on this. Yeah, I can actually set it so that they automatically break and stuff. It's really nice. Um, I love it. <laughs> um you you uh you travel for the early morning and at about noon um you s i'd like uh the two in the front so brother gregor and shadow to please make me perception checks all right uh both of you off in the distance uh start to hear what sounds you, you hear it first what sounds like a rushing river coming up and then a few minutes later, as you're traveling down the trade road, uh, you can see there is a decent sized river kind of lazily meandering through this sort of open hilly grassland. And there appears to be in the distance, maybe mm, 50 or so feet ahead of you along the road, uh, a stone bridge that spans uh, across the length of the river, about 20 feet wide or so. 
And uh, Brother Gregor, you notice standing on the bridge itself uh, appears to be three individuals. Uh, with a 19, uh, you notice from this distance, uh, they appear to be standing in kind of a, a lazy board stance, and they're wearing um, kind of crappy, for, a better, for lack of a better term, kind of crappy, worn, mismatched bits of uh, scale mail and chain mail and studded leather armor. It kind of seems very mismatched. Um, there's one individual that kind of seems to be standing with his arms crossed, kind of looking back at the other two. And as, uh, one of them points in your direction, he kind of snaps forward and kind of takes, uh, takes his shield and kind of gets it at the ready and grabs what appears to be a mace and kind of just has it resting on his hip. Uh, so pretty much the standard, you know, job Haley told across the bridge. Great. Classic dude. <sighs> this might uh, get a little bit fun up here. And then they made me their chief. Uh, what was that? <laughs> so I guess the question is, do we stop or do we just charge on through and make them move? No, well, no. Let's stop. Let's 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 have a conversation. Well, they don't know we're back here, so why don't we let them handle it? True. Then, uh... Yes, you guys stop and talk. I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> All right. As Why am you I driving the horses again? As you approach, um, she would like me to take over. No, but I will leave the talking to you if you don't mind. Oh, fun! Yes. Charisma's my dumb stat. Don't ask me to do it. <laughs> as as you get um, about fifty feet or so, as as the road begins to merge into the bridge, you hear a voice call out to you, and the the rather large, burly individual with the shield kind of calls and goes, "Oi, stop right there!" Hello, st hey, stop. Hey, I'm talking to you. You look, hey. You stop the cart. I'm looking over at uh, Shadow and asking, or not Shadow, sorry. Yeah, yeah Shadow. Yeah, Shadow asking Pretend her. Pretend you don't speak common. Or do you want to just run them down in the horses? Let's have, let's have a chat. She All right, fine. I'll pull the horses to a slow stop. All right. Hail and stop. Oh, hello. Uh, there's a feed across the bridge here. And what would that be? It's, uh, well, what are you carrying back there? What kind of goods you got? We, do, we don't know. We're from a local adventuring guild, and we're heading up to Silvertown to deliver a package to the mining company. He kind of turns. In the package. Kind of turns back to the other two who are kind of standing there, just kind of loosening up a little bit. Well, that sounds like a load of horse shite. What do you got back there? Don't hide it from me. We're royal gods. Oh, we're just some unspoiled <laughs> virgins back here. Please don't hurt us. Oh my God! Please leave my us ass. alone. Did the budget for the royal guards go down? I don't know. I'm not in charge of finances. I just collect a fee. Then where's your writ? I don't need no bloody writ. If you're royal guard, you have a writ for crossing a toll bridge. Do I look like a bloody politician? No. You pay the fees, a hundred gold per head to pass the bridge, we'll let you through. That's a pretty steep price. That's uh, very, it's, very it's a straight price. order from the steep. king of Kadoria. It's a steep price well, for a shitty the bridge. The king of Kadoria. Yeah, we're hired as royal guard himself. He appointed us to this bridge, collecting the fee. So pay up. Have this, have this seen me yet? Um, unless you guys have spoken out, you guys are, unless you're like poking your head out, they're more focused on the two in front as of right now. Can I cast mage armor? Sure. So you kind of in the back incite a small incantation. Uh, do you want your mage armor to look anyway, or is it kind of an invisible force yeah, field? It's just kind of, it starts off like a, almost like a frosty, purple almost and the frost kind of fades as the purple fades away nice i'm gonna uh, ready my whip so if anyone looks in the back i'm just gonna give them a right to the face all right so you're kind of waiting you can sense the tension yeah i curl ready. it up and i've got to get right. the tension ready so i can just kind all of right. let it fly and hopefully take an eye out nice all right so you gonna pay or what I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with an intimidation route here okay i'm you know I'm scary, you know, big, ugly, battle-hardened 
cleric. Sure. It's like, look, you don't want to stop us on the way here. I can tell you guys are new with this. You don't stop us on this bridge. All right, go ahead and roll an intimidation check. All right, I'm going to make a contested roll real quick. Three tickets to paradise. All right. Kind of goes, the fuck you think you're doing, mate? We're royal gods. We ain't afraid of you. <clears throat> hey up. Well, this is about to get ugly. Well, it can't get any uglier than you, so let's do this. <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's fuck them, mate. And I'd like all of you guys to roll initiative for me. <laughs> so uh, in order to do that, what I'd like you to do is what? click click on your token. Uh, actually, let me move you to the battle map. Sorry. There we go. Uh, so I'd like you to click on your token and then click initiative on your uh, character sheets. Oh, wait. okay. Tonight. Well, I already rolled initiative. Do you want me to do it again? Uh, I can add it for you. Okay, thank you. All right, so which one's which, actually? I'm sorry. Damn, two nat ones to begin? This is lovely. We are going to do horrible. Right, so, oh, me. Well, I don't so, know about you. I'm holding an action, so, you know, if they come in the back, I get that free crack. Brother Gregor's at a zero. Cheyenne is a at zero. A nine. <laughs> Dex was my dump stat. What do you expect? <laughs> oh, no. I got you. Don't worry. Um, oh, no. See. I was say, J. Emilio, that phone is stressing me out. <laughs> Zero. Let me just add some some turns here, real quick. Don't mind me. I should have had this already done. Oh, that's not what I want. It looks like the horses up there are necking. They are. <laughs> they're, they're they're in love. Little kissy kissy faces over here. That was a loud conversation we were having. Wow, that is not a good start for us. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, we're fine. You're fine, you're in the wagon. I, I know, that. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, if shit goes wrong, you expect me to go this way, like, really fast. Like, bye, I'm out I of got, here. I got a goal <laughs> to pay my toll. Oops. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> no, I was uh, right here. So, uh, the, as you call him ugly, the... Uh, I'll call him uh, this guy here. The one in the front is the thug. We'll call him. Um, surprise. Spoilers. Uh, he's going to rush up. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, he's going to dash. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Kind of sprints up and gets right up next to you on the side of the carriage, Shad. Uh, and that is his action. Uh, uh, next, I'm in my system. Move that there. There we go. Uh, next are the the bandits. Uh, they're gonna pull out small crossbows, and they're gonna fire two shots. Uh, one shot each at Brother Gregor. Uh, it's kind of a long shot, so they uh got a little bit of a. Actually, let me measure that out. Yep, yeah, you are just out of their range. Uh. So they're going to have disadvantage. It's almost like I designed that on purpose. Um, <laughs> so two shots coming at you, Brother Gregor. Uh, the first right. one's a 15 to hit. Nope. Uh, the second one is a 12 to hit. Also a no. All right. So two, two, two shots uh, kind of go wide on either side of the wagon, and they're going to move up a bit for a better vantage point. This one kind of starting a flanking maneuver, you can see. Um, that is the baddie's turn. Shiana, you have the initiative. Uh, okay. Um, can I see what's going on at all? Um, I would say if you want to like poke your head out, I'd say, yeah, that's kind of a free action to do so. Okay. Then I will, uh, I'll do so. Okay. Uh, you can see uh, the individuals kind of slowly advancing towards you. You can see the, the leader there with the shield is uh, hustling up right about uh, 
Looks pretty aggressive heading towards Shadow. Um, okay, so I'd like to move my... Give me a second here. Can I get used to this? Yeah, take your time. So what I'd advise as players is, especially during combat, I would have your character sheet kind of like minimized up in, I usually keep mine in like the top right corner. And then whenever you're trying to do an action, pop the character sheet open, click whatever attack roll you want to do, and then you can minimize it when it's not your turn. Oh, I just okay. got a bunch of windows right here. So I'm going to move out of the wagon. Okay. So what's your movement speed? Uh, 30. Okay. So each square, each square on the grid is five feet of movement. So I'm going to move 10 feet Okay. to there. Kind of tucking towards the tree line. Yep. And I'm going to hold my hand up in a spectral, uh, almost purplish light is going to flow around my wrist, going to my hand, and it's going to fire off a frosty little ray of frost. Ooh, all right. Go ahead and roll to attack. 23 hit. definitely hits direct hit as this bolt of frosty energy impacts him kind of like right in the shoulder pauldron uh go ahead and roll damage on that seven points of cold damage nice uh as it impacts you can just see this icy wind kind of knocks him and kind of st staggers him a bit he sort of manages to stay on his feet but he definitely looks over at your direction pretty pissed uh, uh, then I'm going to move again. Okay. My remaining 20 feet and head over here. Okay. Kind of a, <clears throat> a strafing cast as you strike and then run for some cover and uh, heading behind these trees. Excellent. Uh, so that's your action and your movement. Are there any bonus actions you'd like to do? Uh, no, I'm good. Alrighty. So that'll end your turn. Uh, Shadow in the Whispering Woods, you have the initiative. So you're sitting kind of up on the wagon, uh, and this guy is right in front of you, just got blasted. All right, so I guess I kind of jumped down on the wagon, kind of my character's already kind of half in that square, but I'm yep. on his level. And as okay. I'm jumping down, I took out the rapier, and I'm going to just poke him with it. Ooh, all right. Do a nice little jab. Go for it. Uh, don't add that extra d6 because it looks like it added my sneak attack. Which yeah, so I, I think I set it up on your character sheet just to automatically roll sneak attack because okay. most of the time you're gonna have sneak attack. Uh, but unfortunately, as you hop down and go for a strike, he seems to almost anticipate it, and he raises up his shield, and the the tip of your rapier kind of scrapes off with a horrible metal on metal sound, and he's as he kind of parries the blow, and he kind of just looks at you and grimaces a little bit. I kind of just hiss at him again. All right, so that's your action. Uh, you still have a movement and bonus action. Uh, Level am, one, there's not a whole lot of yeah, bonus uh, action play. but Yeah, I am not going to move because that would uh, do attack of opportunity at this point, so I will just stay put, uh, stay put in my turn. Okay, sounds good. Isaac in the back. Uh, so your hold action is gone now because it's the start of your turn. Yep. Uh, seeing my... Newfound friend, hop out the back. I will follow suit. Uh, move over here, then move over here. So I went to five. Yeah, so I hopped out there for five. Move over here, ten. Yep. Uh, right over here for fifteen feet of movement. He's ten feet away. Perfect, because my whip has reach, and nice. I'm going to crack it out at him like I'm taming a lion. Crack that whip. All righty, 17, a solid lash right across the front of this. Uh, you see, he's got like sort of like a hauberk on made out of like studded leather or something. Mm -hmm. um, there's no like visceral slash, but the impact definitely knocks him back a bit. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Be eight points of slashing damage. Eight points, nice hit. All right. As he kind of takes the blow and staggers a little bit, he kind of, you actually kind of caught him as he was parrying the blow from the rapier. He left his torso exposed and you took that opportunity and lashed perfect timing. Uh, and I just say, naughty, naughty. Yeah, he kind of scans around, kind of eyeing the three of you, trying to identify 
which target he is most pissed at. Uh, Brother Gregor, you have the initiative. All right. So let's see. Move 15 feet there. All right. Kind of uh, bobbing and weaving through the, the hitching of the wagon. Yeah. You managed to get there. It's 15 feet. All right. Damn fool always forgets about the one driving the horse. And give him a good old smash with the warhammer. All right. Damn. That's oh, smash. yeah. As he's uh, gazing at the three of your companions, kind of trying to gauge which target to to focus on, you take that moment to quite dexterously move behind and get a quick striking blow for eight points of bludgeoning damage. That that definitely seemed to rock his world a little bit. He's kind of reevaluating the situation. Uh, set your movement and your action. Any bonus actions? Um, no, I'm good. Okay. At the start of the initiative, you can see this thug individual kind of definitely just got knocked off his rocker, um, is uh, reevaluating. He's going to use his action, and he uh, whistles out the sharp, and he goes, all right, lads, let's fucking get him. And you can see from uh, the trees, two more allies join the fray. As well as another one. Uh, so I have to add a turn for him. Uh, okay. Oh, not 132, just 12. Uh, as hopping down from the trees, uh, unfortunately, none of you noticing some ambushers waiting. All right. Uh, top of the initiative. Top. Uh, the thug individual is going to. Uh, let's see. He's going to turn and go, Oh, you sneaky little. And he's going to take uh, his mate, or I'm sorry, the thug already used his turn to summon allies. Uh, the sniper hiding on the other side of the bridge is going to take a long distance pot shot with his longbow uh, towards you, Brother Gregor. All right. Uh, let's see. Ooh, that's a crit. Well, whatever this guy does. You... <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, you see, he kind of like perches down, takes a knee, and steadily aims. This guy seems like a dead eye. As he looses the arrow, it goes flying, whistling across the bridge and pierces you right in the joint of your armor, kind of like where that weak spot in the neck. Uh, you take 17 points of piercing. <laughs> well, there goes Brother Gregor. <laughs> All right. So what is your maximum health? Nine. Oh, so, he is one hit point away from just being straight you are, dead. Yeah, you are unconscious. You are fighting for your life, but you are not dead. For you what are, it's worth, Heavy Armor Master does soak up three of that damage. That's true. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put a I'm little... still at negative five. So in 5th edition, what happens is unless you take dub, like basically double your maximum in one hit, which that was really close, um, fucking level one crits, man. They're scary. Um, so you are at zero, effectively. And you're going to start making death saving throws in your turn. We'll talk about that a little bit more when it gets to your turn. Uh, so you see this arrow sink into uh, Gregor's neck, and he just falls limp on the ground. <clears throat> Uh, and then the, there were three. We might be a bit outnumbered. <laughs> More so. Uh, these two are going to... One, two, three, four, five, six. He's going to use his action to dash. Oh, get Wait, it. are they hiding under the wagon? <laughs> uh, no, I messed up. They're... Um... He's going to like hop up in the wagon and start to search uh, in the back. 
and you see them start looking around and you hear them yell, Oi, boss, ain't nothing back here. This fucking lie of thieves. Um, these two up front are, this one's going to move up. Two, three, four, five, six. He's going to rush up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, this one that rushed up to you is going to pull out a dagger and swing at you, Shyana. Naughty, naughty. Um, that's a 14 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. I'm going to use my reaction to cast shield. Okay. So as he takes this dagger and goes for like a, a plunging blow, this wall of arcane force repels the his hand out of the way, sparing you from the attack. Uh, this one starts to fuss with the hitching on the horse. Hey, you can have the fucking horses. I don't care about that. I care about my skin. Oh, we lose. We lost a DM. That's okay. Oh, no. New adventure. I had a potion all along. Hey. <laughs> and Gregor is okay. Hi Hooray. <laughs> Sorry about that. Discord crashed on me for half a second. Um, it was a full second, sir. Don't you lie to me. Uh, this one's going to start messing with the hitching on the back of the horse. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like he's struggling a little bit. He failed his roll, but it looks like he's he's going for the horses. Mm. No, that's fine. Yep. Take him. Uh, Shiana, your turn. Shit. Um, <laughs> fuck, man. Can I still, from my angle, can I see the dude I shot before with the Ray of Frost? Uh, yeah, I'd say you've got a clean shot on him. Uh, I'm going to shoot at Mr. Leaderman again. Okay, so Ray. because this guy is in melee combat with you, can uh, he interrupt? he's not going to interrupt, but he's going to impose disadvantage on your attack. So if you're trying to cast a ranged attack and you've got enemies up in your grill, it's a little bit harder to focus. So you're going to have disadvantage on that attack. So All basically, right, you're going to roll twice and take the lower number if you'd like yeah, to attack. Yeah. That's cool. I'll do it. Okay, go for it. Ooh, natural one. Um, as you're kind of focusing, you manage to cast shield, and at the same time, as, you're kind of, as the shield spell kind of fades, you're focusing and trying to fire the ray of frost, and being relatively new at the arcane art, you managed to go pretty wide and actually almost hit one of the horses. Roll 20 and lowest, it's natural once. This is the most once I've seen in a while. Yeah. Just going through the combat long and even just yeah, I was, before the I was gonna say, guys, what, what is this cursed it is adventure? More than a five percent chance to roll a one, apparently. <laughs> Evidently. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. So that's your action. Any movement or bonus action? Uh, so for a. Bonus action. Just give me one sec to make sure I can do this. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a level three thing. Okay. So for my bonus action, I'm going to use my racial ability, uh, Blessing of the Raven Queen. And I'm going to effectively the equivalent of a Misty Step. All right. And I'm going to poof. Way. All right. Nice. Sweet. All right. Excellent. And there's some lingering effects on that one too, right? Uh, when I get to level three, there is. But at okay. level one, it's just a misty step. Cool. All righty. Uh, so that's your action bonus action. You still technically have movement if you'd like to move. Oh, I do have movement. Isn't that great? I'm going to oh. move. <laughs> <laughs> He's going home, guys. Peace out. Yeah, you guys are on your Fuck phone. this shit. I'm out. <laughs> Level one wizard out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Getting into defensible position. All righty. And that's it. All righty. Uh, Shadow in the Whispering Woods. So how's this guy in front of me looking? I know he's taking some some. Decent he's taking some pretty decent hits. He's looking. He's reevaluating the situation. He's calling his his hidden reinforcements. Ooh, uh, he's the leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, 
he's he's definitely got he's definitely taken some good hits. All right. Well, I still have my rapier out. Mm-hmm. Um, I am going to flourish it and try to stab again. All right. Um, I will say because technically Isaac has the whip with reach. Mm-hmm. He's. Uh, I'd say he's engaged with a, a melee target, so you can proc sneak attack on this. All right, cool. Come on, advantage in our favor. Oh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, he seems it's to be. One, it's a two. <laughs> he seems to be anticipating your blows as he again. This ain't his first rodeo. Actually, takes his mace and kind of hooks it around the rapier as you thrust, and kind of almost disarms you as you struggle to maintain. Your grip on it seems to got some muscle to him. Um, all right, any movement or bonus actions? No. All right, that's your turn, Isaac. You're up. Um, same thing. I'm just gonna whip it and uh... whip it real good. All right, eighteen. Well hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Nine slashing. So there we nice. go. All right. A solid hit. Um, again, waiting for that timing. As as Shadow strikes and he parries with the mace, you manage to actually wrap the whip around his forearm and yank, almost throwing him off balance, and he kind of takes a knee. Uh, he's looking. You can see there's a flash of fear in his eyes as he's... Uh, I would like to say to him, it's like, sir, take the horses and leave with your life. Come on. Do the smart thing. All right. Uh, any movement, Isaac? No, I'm going to chill out here. All right. Sounds good. Brother Gregor. Oh, man. All right. Let's see this horrible, right. horrible death so, save. Please. Uh, go ahead and roll a death saving throw for me. So you're kind of fighting on the brink of life and death right now. So at the beginning of at each of your turns, you're going to roll what's called a death saving throw. So it's just a straight D20 roll. I'm explaining this more for the viewers. I know you know how to play. Um, on a ten or higher, <laughs> that's a failure. On a on a nine or lower, that's a fail. So uh, with a two, that is one failed death saving throw. Go ahead and mark that on your character sheet. Are you gonna kill yep. the? Yep. You're gonna kill the healer the first session. Oof. It's what you do. <laughs> Haven't you read combat tactics for dungeon masters? The monsters know what they're doing. Fair enough. It's yeah. kill the commander, kill the cleric, let yep. the wizard run away. <laughs> that's and I'm doing a good job of it. Mm-hmm. All righty. Uh, top of the initiative, the thug is now his turn. Uh, he's going to kind of look at you and say, "Oi, piss off, kitty cat!" And he's going to take a step forward and engage you, Isaac. He's okay. uh, pretty pissed off that you've got a couple good slashes at him. He goes, "Stand and fight me like a man!" And he's going to take two swings with his mace at you. Okay. Uh, the first one is a 14 to hit? Uh, 14 just does, but I'm going to impose defensive duelist and make him miss. All right. So you take a ready stance and kind of slash with a quick, uh, a quick slap of the whip against his wrist, kind of foiling his attack. Uh, his right. second attack. Put the against description you. of that in there for those that don't know it. Oh, yeah. If you do, you have that written out. I, I do have it written out as the feat. I clicked on it, but nothing really happened. Hold on, can I do that? There we go. There you go. So when wielding a finesse weapon and are hit by an attack, you may use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC. Nice. Uh, the second attack is an eight to hit. Oh, uh, that misses. All right. So again, seeming frustrated and kind of a blind fury, he goes for a cross swipe towards your face and just kind of lean back out of the way. All right. That ends his turn. The sniper back here is happy where he's at. He's going to take a pot shot at you, Shad. Actually, um, uh, he doesn't have a good line of sight. I was going to say, Shad's way the fuck out there. I mean, he's got a long bow, so he's got, he's got range, but the matter is cover. So he's going to reposition. Uh, kind of standing in the center of the bridge. Now he's going to take his shot at you with a longbow. Uh, that's a nine to hit. Nope. As he fires again, it goes uh, 
a little bit high and actually kind of sticks into the, the back of the wagon, actually tears a hole through the cover and kind of brrr, sticks into the wood. My wagon. No. <laughs> My cabbages. <laughs> All righty. Uh, the bandits, uh, this one is frustrated that you teleported away, so he's going to try to chase you. Oh, my God. Go away, Go dude. Away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I picture that's exactly what you're really, so he's like, actually, not even upset. Just like, oh, he's, come he's on. just booking it towards you. He's he's bloodthirsty, so he's going to use his action. I love to a full-on sprint to get yes. there. <laughs> yep, full-on And then sprint. do nothing. Um... <laughs> Gotta breathe. This, Take a breath. This, one more minute. I get this, you. One's, this one's hopping into the back of the wagon, still rummaging. This one's gonna come up for like kind of a cheap shot on you, Isaac. Okay. Uh, he's gonna take a stab with a dagger at you. Okay. Uh that's an 18 to hit. 18? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that hits. All right. So you're gonna take six points of slap uh piercing damage, I'm sorry, as he gets six, you. Six points of slapping damage? Jesus. I know we're excited for Final Fantasy VII, but do we have to recreate the freaking June and Canada scene? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <Throwback>. You, you, <laughs> hear, um, you hear the one in the wagon go, All right, boss, there's nothing back here. What will we do? And the boss just kind of goes, grab the horses and run. Just get the fuck out of here. Uh, this one he says, boss, I'm trying, but they're really on there. Um, he's going to make a roll, and that's a natural one. The horse actually getting Check frustrated. Yeah, so he the horse is going to make an the harness with the horses. Uh, the horse is going to make an attack. Is he permanently cross-eyed now? The horse is going to get the first kill. <laughs> uh, so Jesus. the horse is 25 to hit for 8 points of blood. 25 to hit. Jeez. Just knocks this guy on his ass, and he is now prone. Who remembers that scene from Red Dead Redemption Two? Yeah. The guy trying to shoe a horse, and he just when he kicks him right in the head, he just yeah. fucking dead. He's looking rough. He's almost like backwards, like crab walking away from the horse at this point. Um, that's all of their turns. Okay, uh, Shiana, you're face to face with this bloodthirsty rogue in front of you. Uh... Is the he horse handsome? Uh, he looks like he probably hasn't showered in a couple months. So uh, he's handsome. He's he's got a few teeth. Um, a little bit of like a stubbly beard, kind of coming in patchwork. Uh, oh my god, he's totally the ex-husband from Tiger King. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh god. Oh no. Oh no. Yes. I suppose I will pull out the dagger from my belt. Okay. And take a swing at the lad. All right. Oh my god. Oh my god, the natural ones, you guys. Yeah, no, this I don't on? roll twenty needs an update to say, hey guys, cut the shit. You guys are but level one. I have a, a question. D20 DM. needs a five percent chance of the one. Uh, How many have we rolled tonight? How many 20s have we rolled? Let's put oh, that out there. A mercy, um, so far, a Luke's the only question. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Uh, so I misread mage armor to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, it gives me a base of 13. Okay. Uh, so, that, so with the dex mod, my AC would be 16. So that 14 would have missed you. So you can take that spell, shot back, spell slot back for shield. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So you I'm, wouldn't have... Yeah, you wouldn't have even needed to cast shield. So Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to stay right. right there. All right, sounds good. Uh, so is that the end of your turn? That is my turn. All right. Shadow in the Whispering Woods. Uh, you can see this individual's kind of rushed past you, and you can see Brother Gregor there bleeding out on the ground with the, cross, with the arrow sticking out of the back of his neck. Stabilize in place, ignore. It's fine. <laughs> Don't pull it out. It'll make things worse. <laughs> uh, if I move, though, do I still? I would still proc an uh, opportunity attack, right? Do I shift one? Uh, so shifting is technically a 4E rule. I'm not going to allow it in my campaigns because I'm an <laughs> asshole. Um, <laughs> I'm 100% okay with that. The hell is yeah. that? Yeah. All right. I'm fine with that. All right. All right. Uh, I guess at that point, I am just going to try to smack him again with the rapier. All right, go for it. Third time's the charm. 
Yeah. yeah. There you go. So for 15 points of damage, you with your cat like senses kind of wait and you can like wait for that that hunter's instinct kicks in and as he goes and sort of bum rushes isaac you pounce and take that rapier and plunge it into the back of his neck and he just goes limp you hear him <coughs> cough up a little bit of blood as he falls to his knees defeated and that's what you get Lee. all right oh. um so now that he's gone i am uh going to go over towards um brother gregor i'm gonna put myself between him and the guy that got knocked on his ass by the horse okay uh can i use bonus action to stabilize him or would that be a full action that's unfortunately a full action to okay. use a medicine check okay uh, uh however for future reference there is a rogue archetype that lets you use uh a healer's kit as a bonus action Red. Hmm. yeah okay food for thought um, so yeah, you're kind of like looking at the situation, kind of taking note of the guy on his butt, looking at your friend and kind of evaluating the situation. Yep. And I don't have anything to do for bonus action, so I will stay here. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Isaac, you're up. All right. Uh, as a bonus action, I'm going to take a second wind. Okay. So it's 1d10 plus your fighter level. Go ahead and roll that. Uh, let's see. There we go. Hold on. I'm going to move this and put that right there. So I get five hit points back. Yep. So five hit points back as you kind of take a moment to stir to yourself. Okay. And then as my action, I'm going to take the guy who shanked me right in my kidneys and hit him. All right. 29. Nice. Go ahead and roll damage. It'll be eight points of slashing damage. Ouch. So you whip this guy directly across the face, and you just see this flash of red as he kind of staggers back. You can see the blood is kind of dripping down from his eye, right, right above his eyebrow where you struck him. He looks like he's questioning every decision he's ever just made in his life right now. Your boss is dead. I'd run away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he kind of looks at you and kind of... Yeah. All right. Brother Gregor, still bleeding out. All right. I need Number another two. death saving throw. Please Come don't roll on. a one. On ten plus. Woo! Oh, thank God. All right, so that's one success and one failure for Brother Gregor. All righty. Top of the round. Uh, this guy is dead, so I'll take him out of the initiative. Uh, the sniper is still sitting pretty. Um, he's. His resolve hasn't been shaken too badly yet. So he's going to yes. take a pot shot. Yeah. He's going to take a pot shot at you, Shadow. Yep. Uh, I can get rid of the thug because the thug is dead. Uh, so my sniper is going to take the longbow shot. That's a 22 to hit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, steadies himself, shoots, and you take an arrow, kind of a grazing blow for five points of piercing damage. Which isn't really a grazing blow at level one, but. No, that, that's more than <laughs> half. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All righty, that's his turn. Uh, the bandit's turn. This guy is going to kind of blood all over his face. Just fuck this shit. No, not worth it. I'm going back. I'll fucking eat out of the trash bins again. I don't give a shit. He's going to disengage from you and start running. Okay. Uh, so he just hightails it out of there. Uh, this guy kind of goes, Oi! What the fuck? <sighs> Hops out and is going to make a dash towards you, Isaac. Okay. Uh, he's going to swing with a dagger. All right. Uh, that is an 11 to hit. That misses. All right. Kind of takes a, 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 a half-hearted swing. You can get, you get the sense that with everything going on, as he swings, he sees the, the bloody corpse of his boss behind you. Kind of halfway through the motion is kind of like, ah, oh, shit. And kind of starts <laughs> to kind of yeah, kind of starts to turn. He's kind of you. He, you get the sense that he's uh, he's not going to stick around for too much longer. Um, this guy is going to backpedal five, ten feet before standing up uh, for half of his movement, and then start to run the rest uh, of his movement, just hide tailing it out of there. He just got kicked in the face by a horse. He's terrified. Um, 
The last bandit, however, though, is we got a little mini one on one duel going down here. Um, do we have audio on Wolf? I think we lost it again. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, he's here. Okay. Uh, so does, does it sound good? Yeah, you sound great. Sounds beautiful. Yeah. Um, this guy is gonna again go for the uh the dagger swing at you. Um, that is an uh, eighteen to hit. Uh, now I'm gonna use shield. All right. Whoosh. Sparking that arcane energy, you make him miss. Uh, he seems determined though. You're kind of a interesting looking dude. Uh, interesting looking woman, I should say. Okay. Uh, Uh, he's standing his ground. All right. Uh, Cheyenne, it's your turn. I'm going to swing at him with the dagger. Okay. Uh, 14 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. For four points of piercing, you kind of manage to, to quickly get a quick slash in um, kind of just above the elbow, and you can see it starts to... You can see underneath the armor kind of starts to get like a dark sort of a brownish tinge. Uh, he definitely drew blood with that attack, and he kind of, ah, shit! You little knife here! Um, That's how you make a proper attack, love. Ooh, with the taunt. <laughs> All right. Um, Anything else, Shiana? No, that's it. All right. Shadow in the Whispering Woods, it's your turn. All right. Uh, I would like to try to stabilize Brother Gregor. All right, go ahead and make me a medicine check. I mean, you can't make things worse. All right. So quickly, uh, with what little medical background you have, you know enough to just kind of like put pressure on the wound and like keep the red stuff on the yeah. inside. Yeah. Um, so you manage to stabilize uh, Brother Gregor. So you're no longer making death saving throws. However, you're, you're still unconscious. So go ahead and roll me 1d4, please. So in the chat, if you want, you can just type slash R space 1D4. Foul. Foul. All right. So uh, you are going to wake up in about four hours with one hit point. Eh, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. Death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm not dead. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. That's close. All right. It just means someone else has to drive the wagon for a while. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Shadow in the Whispering Woods, anything else you'd like to do? Yeah, uh, you've used so your action. My, so as my bonus action, can I stow the rapier and take out the shortbow? Uh, item swaps are pretty much a free action, I'd say. Unless you start getting ridiculous with it and start abusing it, I, I generally am pretty lax on that rule. So yeah, you can take out the shortbow. Okay, so I just take out the shortbow, and I am just kind of sitting there just getting ready to shoot, but don't have a, the action. Okay, yet. sounds good. All right. Isaac, you're up. Uh, I'm going to attempt to whip the guy in front of me. Probably not succeed. Uh, seven misses, unfortunately. He's starting to run, and kind of that, that pivot that he does, you, you didn't anticipate it, and you kind of crack the whip like right next to his ear, so that little mini sonic boom, definitely, he kind of winces from that, but unfortunately no damage. All right, um, then that'll be it. I'll just kind of uh, hang out back here and, you know, get ready to rush for support if anyone needs it. All right, sounds good. Brother Gregor, you are unconscious but stable. I'm going to remove you from initiative, okay? Fine with me. Okay. The zero is appropriate now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the sniper is going to take... Something tells me I'll be seeing that zero a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sniper is... Kind of hanging out. He's going to take one shot at you, Shadow. Uh, with his longbow. That's a nine to hit. Uh, that misses. All right. Kind of falls a little bit short, like skids in the in the middle of the cobblestones in front of you. You kind of just hear this like, shit. All right. Mic check. check. Can hear you. So, sounds good. Sounds yep. good. Sounds great to me. All right. It's been holding up. Pretty well so far. I have to, Excellent. other than that one crash I had, pretty pretty happy with the results tonight so far. All right, uh, the bandit's turn. Uh, this guy up here is gonna haul ass. So he's gonna dash away. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 
55-60. Kind of like just starts running, and as he's passing the sniper friend, he just kind of goes, fuck this shit, mate. Let's get out of here. Um, this guy is going to run off the map and basically run through the woods out of line of sight. Uh, the river and through the woods to grandmother's house, I guess. Effectively defeated. Uh, this guy is going to just book it. So he's going to take the opportunity attack. Okay. Let me do that whole fata. Yeah. So oh, for uh, that whip. for those of you watching, um, essentially, if you leave a threatened square, so whenever you're next to someone, you're considered in melee distance to them. Whenever you leave that square, you're kind of giving up your guard. And so you, uh, the players can use their reaction to take what's called an opportunity attack. And so for running away, Isaac gets a free swing for a 12 with the whip, which just hits. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, that's going to be nine. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, you, you managed to kind of like wrap it around his ankle and pull. So he eats shit, face in the dirt, kind of stumbles and gets up and continues to run away. Uh, I'll put losing, him at losing the half his movement because he yep. ate shit. <laughs> yeah, I will... Uh, I'll put him at the edge of the map there. So he's still, he's, he's running for dear life. Okay, so we've got that one running. One of them fled. That one's running. <laughs> this one, battling with uh, Shayana. He's, I he's, never ran away. He kind of like takes the, takes the, um, the wound in his arm and like dips his fingers in it and like licks the blood off his fingers, trying to intimidate you. And then goes for a, a stab towards the gut with his dagger that is a nine to hit that misses all right you kind of take your dagger and with a quick side step parry it out of the way um he kind of grimaces at you this one seems to uh not show any signs of fear just yet however it is your turn i'm gonna look at him and say no no i'll i'll show you how it's done and i'm gonna swing at him okay all right, I'll twenty. Disadvantage. Uh, so you can take the twenty-three because you you don't have disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and roll damage on the twenty-three because that definitely hits. For five points of piercing, you catch him right, sort of below the nipple, and the dagger kind of sticks, and you have to kind of actually push him away a little bit. As his both of his hands, he drops his dagger, and kind of both hands go towards the wound, and he looks at you, and now the fear comes into his eyes and he's kind of <coughs> gasping a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of blood in his spittle as he's kind of like coughing up a little bit. He's um, question. Up. Yes. That was a crit. Did it come up as a crit? It looked like it was just a D4 plus the dex. One D2. Oh, that was a crit actually. That wasn't a crit. Yes, it was. Uh, the one yeah, left. 18. It's 18 plus five. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was the 18. Oh, it was 18. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. It looked like just on the top bar, it said 20 plus 3 and then the 23. I'm so sorry. Didn't yeah. mean to... Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Still getting yeah, used he... to the real 20 again. It's all good. He's looking real rough. Don't go anywhere. The show's just starting. All right. Uh, any movement or bonus actions? No, I'm staying put. All righty. Shadow in the Whispering Wind. All right. So I am. It's the only one left on the map, or, or the sniper's still there, too. The sniper's still there, as well as the one who's fleeing who got kicked in the face by the horse. Okay. They are less my concern right now. Uh, so I am going to use 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Do I have line of sight here to the one that's attacking Cheyenne? Um, I'd say he's got partial cover so i'm gonna give him plus two to his ac on that attack all right uh so with the short bow i am going to knock an arrow and loose it uh, i i do get sneak attack because he's yep. engaged correct correct you want to disadvantage what's oh, phenomenal right uh 21 to hit fires yeah. and the arrow just pierces through the back of his neck and you just uh cheyenne you just see his throat erupt from the exit wound as he just starts spittling and falls backwards. He is defeated. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yes. All right. Uh, 
right. Uh, so that was full movement for me. I do not have a bonus action, so that is the end of my turn. All right. Sweet. Uh, Isaac, you're up. All right. I'm going to... Let's see. I'm going to move 5, 10, 15. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, right about there. Uh, kind of standing as the vanguard to make sure no one comes close to Brother Gregory. And I do have a longbow, but I want to keep my whip out. Actually, hold I, I mean, you can you can take out the longbow this turn and shoot. No problem. Like, basically, <laughs> also, you kind of get, like, one free weapon swap per turn is the way I generally rule it. Like, if you start doing weird builds with, like, the sword and shield and then... Like, it, then I'll start calling you on it, but it's you can definitely take a ranged attack if you want. Yeah, so all right. So I'll uh, kind of hook my whip kind of haphazardly uh, on my side and pull the longbow out, and I'll take a pot shot at the sniper. Go for it. A 15 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, it's going to be eight piercing. Nice. So it actually kind of pierces deep into his shin, and you kind of see him... Uh, wince and stop and stoop over and like pull the arrow head out and it kind of snaps. So he's got like half of an arrow sticking out of his leg just below the knee. He's looking pretty I, hurt. And as he does it, I'm just gonna shrug. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll be my turn. All right. You he see him kind of uh, turn to his his buddy who's just sprinting and kind of just yeah, you're right. Let's get out of here. Uh, he's but not going out without a fight. He's gonna take one last pot shot at you, Isaac. Okay. Blood for blood, let's see. That's a natural one. So as he like kind of like haphazardly shoots, the string on his bow snaps and whips him in the face. And he kind of just drops it and turns and hightails it. So he's gonna move his 30 feet. If he's running without disengaging and he's still technically within combat range, do I get an attack of opportunity? Uh you don't get a, a longbow Ooh. attack of opportunity. I didn't think I did, but I had to ask. No, it's worth asking. Uh, so he's uh, actually worth it. That'd be scared. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> terrifying. Uh, so he's actually a what else? So he's gonna run away thirty-five feet. Um, so that's his turn. Uh, the bandits. There is one left, I believe. This guy's gonna dash off the map. Yeah. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Oh no, he's still on the map. Still, still right for the kill. <laughs> All right, uh, Cheyenne, you're up. Uh, you have this this just mutilated body of this bandit in front of you. And the other guy behind me, he's still running away. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So this guy would have left the map. Um, Is he gone? You know what's great? It, uh, yeah. Technically, he'd be gone. He would have ran. Right, then never and, mind. Yeah. Um, Thank you for that. I missed him. I'm just going to... Uh, start taking my dagger and kind of mm -hmm. dig his eyeball out of his socket. Oh, God. Okay. Wow, we're going there. That got oh, dark. Jesus. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take it, put it in a little pouch that I have. All right, go ahead and make me just a medicine check for me. Just see how well you can kind of extract the eyeball out of the skull. All right, it's a little... Oh, that's a goo ball. <laughs> it's a little gory, but uh, you've got it. It's a little mushy, but a keepsake. What color is his eye? Uh, he had like a nice hazel eyes. Beautiful. Brownie green. I'm going to hold it up and kind of admire the color and then put it in the pouch. All right. You can add that to your inventory. Bandit eyeball. And uh, I guess I'll move up to there. All right. And Sounds try to reconvene good. with the party. All right. Uh, shadow in the it. cool. Shadow. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to there. Um, All right. How far am I? That's probably going to be a disadvantage. 
Um, what's the long range on your uh, your bow? That is a good question, sir. I off the top of my head, I don't know what short bow is. Short uh, bow should be like eighty. Should show up on there. Let me let me take a gander here. Uh, short bow is eighty three twenty, so he's Holy definitely farther shit, away. I guessed it. That's crazy. Nice. <laughs> So you can take a shot, but it's going to be at disadvantage. Disadvantage, that's fine. I'll take a shot yep. at him. Uh, which one are you shooting at? Oh, uh, the wood elf. Okay. The sniper. That's yeah, enough to hit uh, for five points of damage, because no sneak attack. Okay. That's actually enough to drop him. Uh, you Avenged. see the, <laughs> the arrow kind of goes through and hits him dead in, the, in between the shoulders, and he is no more. Nice. All righty. That's three kills for Shadow in the Whispering Woods. All right. Uh, any that was your movement and your action? Yep, that was my movement and action. Okay. Uh, Isaac, you're up. Uh, you know what? Screw it. Uh, let's see. We're going to just go... Five, that's not... So <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 right here. Uh, I've got the longbow, so that's got the range of Jesus, so I'm fairly certain I don't have to roll yep. a disadvantage on this guy. Yep, you're correct. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a shot at him, if you if you don't mind. Go for it. Alright. Let me pull up Isaac's character sheet again, and give that a clicky-click. 17 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. It'll be five points of piercing, sir. And yeah, that's enough to drop him as well. So as he's just sprinting for his life, the arrow whistles through the air, coming at a high arc and impact. And the force of the impact enough to just flatten him. And All with right. that, we are out of initiative. All right. I'm going to just check on Brother Gregory, and then Rudy's going to take a leap. Okay. Right. Um. Yeah, if you guys want to take five now at the end of this combat, I think that's a good stopping point for now. We'll take a quick little five-minute break, let people use the restroom, refill drinks, stuff like that, and we'll be back in a bit. Uh, I don't know how Stream Captains is doing. Um, I have not been paying attention to that. 20 minutes left. 20 like minutes, all right. I was going to try to time this, but... Mm -hmm. Hey, Wee Woo, how's it going? Hey, hey. Awesome. Oh, thanks. Good to hear. Come here, bud. Wow. wow. Chat is super active. Wow. Look at that. I'm sorry I can't really talk to you guys during all this. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got a wee woo. Very cool. Hmm. Ooh, all right. Can, can we can we repull that now after after the battle? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> all right. Uh, for those of you guys in the chat, while we're taking this little break, if you want to get involved, the Tea Leaf Adventuring Company is always looking for new uh, recruits. Um, so hop in our TGR Discord. There's links uh, in the chat. Um, if you look, there's a small little section there just for this uh, West Marches campaign. There's a channel for all the rules, for all the current players, just a general chat for questions and commentary and stuff like that. Um, definitely feel free to join us. We're trying to get as many people involved as possible. Um, new players are totally welcome. We're taking this nice and slow. Uh, don't be afraid. I know D&D can be kind of intimidating, especially for new people, but please don't be shy. Uh, we're, we're totally accommodating for new players. We'll teach you everything. We'll get you hooked up with a character just the way you want them. And uh, there's so many people in the game room that are more than happy to help you with any questions. Um, uh, honestly, this whole West Marches campaign was designed for the new players who want to play right, Dungeons actually, and Dragons yeah. and did not have the time or know the people or, or just not sure what to do. So it's like, hey, let's throw this together, get new people on there and share the love. Exactly. D&D is my favorite game, and so I just want to spread the love and get more people playing it, because it's awesome, and everyone should play it. 
ain't that the truth? Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Speaking Listen, of someone who's I been playing for since he was eight. Yeah. Dude, worth dude. Playing the whole time. yeah, like I said, 1998 over here. Like I started playing fucking Resident Evil, Final Fantasy VII, and Dungeons and Dragons all in the same year. And I started with second edition where it's like, hey, do you know algebra? Good. <laughs> oh god. Good old Thacko. I was gonna say the two hit armor classes. I like the the charts that you used to have to do and like Oh yeah, it was yeah. if you were a wizard and you made it to like level eight, you were essentially god. Yeah. Uh, uh, level one, no, I have one hit at five. They were good. They were good at level five. They got fireball, they were all set. Yeah. The fucking level seventeen magic missile. <laughs> <laughs> More fireballs. The sad thing is I think I have like three or four copies of the second edition PHB sitting on a desk. I lost mine when I moved from Palmer and I'm so sad. Honestly, so sad. if the store it's like if the physical location were accessible right now, I would just bring over all the second edition books that I got lying around because they're not doing me any good. I used to have the uh, second edition, the compendium, just for the elves, and it had like the nice faux leather covering on it and the gilded gold of like uh, lettering, and it had like all the gnarly, weird stuff of second edition elves, which were like four foot three and just like real, like they're twigs. And they did all this funky stuff that fifth edition kind of expands on, but second edition elves were like really crazy. Oh, come on. The Averial elves, those things were <laughs> hilarious to play. I love those. And can, it's like a gr- I played one, and the group that I was playing with was incredibly sadistic. <laughs> they realized that Averial elf wings were using a couple, it's like for potion components for high level oh, potions. God. Guess who had to regrow his freaking wings every like session? <laughs> That's funny. <sighs> but we were rolling in gold. That's all that mattered. <laughs> so before we get started again, um, I just want you guys in the chat to know that uh, as part of this Twitch stream, trying to incorporate the Twitch chat, at the end of the stream, uh, we're going to have uh, a fan favorite. So basically the chat's going to vote on which character they think was their favorite, which one was the funniest or did the best in battle, whatever you want to, whatever metric you want to use to choose your favorite. And that player receives extra incentive to keep returning. So with the Twitch chat, um, the crowd favorite is going to get a plus one to their, uh, their position standing, as well as there's going to be a DM's choice. So at the end of the, this session, I'm also going to give someone plus one and those two people will never be the same. So. So stick around and have your voice be heard. <laughs> All right. Everybody good to go? <clears throat> Sounds good, buddy. All righty. Thanks, Wee Woo. All right. So All righty. after the battle ends, um, Chad is going to go up to each of the three individuals that she killed and is just going to, with her dagger, just cut off a lock of hair from each of them and put it in a small little pouch that she keeps. Easily enough. I want to search the leader's body. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me an investigation check. All right. Um, it appears to be uh, probably he's a human male. You give him somewhere around 40 ish. Um, the armor and equipment that he had on him is pretty lackluster. It's definitely shoddy. You can see there's like nicks in the mace that he had. It's a bit rusted in the handle. His armor has got scratches and dents and is just completely mismatched. Um, you do notice on his, uh, like underneath his ear, he's got this interesting tattoo that almost looks like, um, it's like a, it looks like a footprint, but it has like three, three pads and then like the thumb, um, which kind of strikes you as odd. You're not really sure what the significance of that is. Um, is there anything I could roll to maybe see if I know of the significance? Uh, sure. Go ahead and roll me a religion check, actually. Well, I'm good at that. So see. Yeah, it's not really scratch. It just it. You're not sure if it's like meant to be a symbol or if it's just kind of a a, a cool little personal design. Not super sure. Can I take my dagger and kind of carve off a piece of the skin that has the oh, tattoo? <laughs> wow. Sure. Go ahead and make me just a straight dexterity roll. So on your just character sheet. Dex. Yep. So you're gonna just click on the dexterity button itself. All right. Twelve. 
it's a little sloppy, but you've got a little flap of flesh does with make out. Does it make out the tattoo? Yeah, you've got the tattoo. Sweet. I want to put in the um, same pouch as the eyeball. All right. Uh, as you're I'm doing this, I'm not going to be the bloodthirsty one of this yeah. group. There's something um, wrong here. You also managed to find on his hip, uh, there's like a small little cloth pouch that seems to kind of like a. They don't really have pockets back then, but would, would, be, <laughs> yeah. what would be. Uh, the good old belt pouch. Yeah, like a little belt pouch. Anything good in it? Sure, you open it up, kind of dump it out. Um, you find uh, what appears to be a handful of silver. Uh, you can count it. And a few like dried nuts and berries. Like a little bit of foodstuffs, a little half a ration, basically. Um, I'll count the silver. All right, you find 17 silver coins. Is there a way on Brother Gregory? I know he, the message checks already on him, but... I can let my expertise make it more comfortable, see if there's anything I can do to help him. Or, like, you know, just way. drag him onto the wagon. Well, I'm going to do that, but ground. I want to do this before I move you, dude. Uh, sure, go ahead, and make a, go ahead and make a medicine check. I'm assessing damage before I move my patient. <laughs> the scene is safe. Scene safety, BSI, fireball. <laughs> medicine. Oh, yeah, I'm so good at this. Come on, don't be a one. As far as you can tell, he seems good. Like he's gonna be fine. He's he's good. Just just throw him away. The gentle arrow. slap, the yeah, gentle okay. slap on the cheek. It's like, yeah. okay, he's breathing. We're, it, was yeah. that like two ones that were rolled from, or two two twos? I should say that were rolled from medicine. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pick him up and put him in the back. Try to make okay. him as comfortable as humanly possible. Sounds good. All right. Can I, Bye. as he's picking him up, can I search the back of the car? Maybe there's like an emergency stash of potions or something. Uh, it's sure. A big red bag with a cross on it that we never. Saw. <laughs> Should I roll something? Oh uh, yeah, go ahead and roll an investigation. Sorry. Eighteen. Eighteen. You do a pretty thorough sweep. Um, but there's no hidden compartments or latches or secret doors or anything, unfortunately. That's right. Worth a look. All right. Is there anything else you guys would like to do? Friendship. No one's going to take the arrows from the archers. If he dies, I got dibs on his eyeball. Wow, Shad, like, no. Uh, I we guess don't. while I'm over at the uh, the sniper there, I'm just going to drag him off to the side of the road just to make it easier for the horses to get over since we got to cross. Okay. So. Yeah, you take the time to do that. Move the bodies. Yeah. Sounds good. The horses throughout this entire scenario uh, have been remarkably calm. Uh, even with the, the violence and the, the screams and the, the slashing and the attacking. Yeah, and, and on, and on the chill. way back, as I'm walking back towards the cart, because I guess I'll take over uh, steering since our uh, our, our uh, horse horse wrangler there uh, went down. Uh, the uh, gray one that did the kicking, I'm just going to give him a nice little pat. Well, he kind of <laughs> nuzzles into you a little bit. He is now our favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, one last thing before we depart. Uh, I would like to just recover the arrows from the bad guy who was shooting at us. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um. So you managed to find a bundle. He had about uh. He had about eleven arrows left. All right. I'll take uh five of them and give uh six to Chad. Okay. All right. Rossi Can I just more. sprint over to the guy that died that I cut his eyeball out and see if he had any kind of money, gold, silver, copper? Sure. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Twenty-one. All right. Uh, you do a quick pat down of his pockets and stuff, and you're kind of careful to avoid a lot of the bloody bits. Uh, but you do find something interesting. Um, kind of like a, as opposed to a pouch, he has like this small little, almost looks like a jewelry box, and it looks like not like artisan level of craftsmanship, but like better than you'd expect from like a some thug to have. It kind of catches you off guard a little bit. It's got like a, a neat little, neat little box. 
I'll tag it. I'm not gonna open it. I'll just okay. tag it and stash it for now. Yeah. Now. It's got like a little like a little hinge that you could like open and like a little latch that you could open and close and would open it. Okay, right. I'll stash it for now. Okay. You can add that to your inventory. It feels as you kind of pick it up, there's definitely something rattling around in it, but it feels kind of light. Is it teeth or buttons? <laughs> <laughs> One way to find out. Another campaign where we've got a box of teeth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Uh, is there anything else you guys would like to do? Um, are we taking a short rest here? As we're kind of picking all this up, does this count as a short rest or no? Uh, you guys have been actively doing stuff, so I'd say you'd have to designate the time to kind of chill. Um, Which we like to do that before we took off, just kind of took like an hour, collect ourselves, or at least uh, wait until our friend woke up. I mean, considering we have two guys run away into the woods, it might not be bad for me to be able to recover some HP since I'm less than half right now. Get a little sure. bit of time for our cleric to wake up. You know, before all right. Rude. So if you if you want to wait, so he's gonna. I mean, your characters wouldn't know this, but he's gonna wake up in four hours, and a short right. rest is one hour. So yeah, you could theoretically, awesome. okay, just kind of knock some of that time off. Yeah, that's kind of okay. what I'm thinking. All right. So I'll say your short rest goes off without a hitch. So you guys can roll hit dice if you would like to. Those of you who are conscious. Hey, back to full. Yep. But I get my second one back, so that works. Yeah. All right, three more hours till I wake up. Yep. <laughs> All righty. Uh, yeah, about an hour goes by. Um, I'll use Arcane Recovery to get a spell slot now. There you go. Nice. Kind of taking the moment to meditate, focus on the battle that you just had. All right. Um, the hour passes. Uh, Brother Gregor is still stable, but he's kind of looks like he's taking a nap. Well deserved, sir. Well deserved. Mm -hmm. All right. All right um, sh shall we continue on? Took a little extra time that we weren't expecting. Would you like me to drive the horse this time? Drive the horse? Is that is that the right terminology? It might be. I don't know. Sure. I'll sort direct of direct the horse. I can try to direct the horse. <laughs> sure, all right, all uh, right. Let's see this roll. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I'll, I'll sit up front uh, with uh, Shad. Make sure she doesn't carve out the eyeball of a horse. I'm not okay. Shad. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. My apologies. My God. How dare you? Uh, you know, I'm just a horrible human being. Shad pokes her head out. Wow. Uh, I'm sorry, Shiana. There's two S's here, and I got really. <laughs> all right. So, uh. Shiana, go ahead and make an animal handling check for me. One. All right. As you're trotting along, uh, you start picking up the pace a little bit. And the horses kind of go from like a trot to a canter. Uh, and you're making pretty good time. Um, you, they seem like you, you were a little worried kind of at the, the slightly bumpy start, but uh, it seems easier than you thought it would be. Um, you guys travel for the rest of the afternoon. And about three o'clock in the afternoon or so, uh, Brother Greg, you wake up with a slight uh, pain in the back of your, your neck, but you are conscious at one hit point. Uh, did anyone actually remove the arrow or is it still sticking in there? Uh, I was taught to stabilize in place and get you to a healer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I don't think in the heat of battle I would have ripped it out, so I think it's probably yeah. still stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, you're awake. A hard one. Would you Would you like me to try to take it out now that you, you seem... <laughs> mm -hmm. We were worried that you might not wake up, so this is a good sign, I think. <laughs> All right, just, just give me a moment here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself All before right. trying to pull the arrow out. So there you're going to break apart the shaft and put it in your <laughs> mouth to bite down on. <laughs> Isn't that the only way? <laughs> so go ahead and uh, roll your Cure Wounds on yourself. <laughs> Sorry for the real obvious in the chat. All right. So six health back to you, so you should be at seven. 
Yep, and time to yank this arrow out, which is probably going to be a medicine check on myself. Yep, go for it. Don't roll a one. <sighs> Three, two. Oh, it hurts like a bitch, but you manage to actually pull it out, and it comes out pretty clean. And it seems like some of that residual healing magic that's kind of in the process of like stitching up the wound actually kind of cauterizes it behind you. Um, you. You're feeling a lot better. That you, you've 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 been through some stuff. You've been beat up a little bit. That's 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 standard. Uh, just another scar. Yeah. It's just another scar. All right. Uh, as you guys travel along, the sun begins to grow low in the sky, and it kind of gets to that like magic hour, twilight, kind of gray sky area, and you start thinking about potentially finding a spot to make camp for the night. Um, would I roll? Uh, gee, since I'm up front, could I use like maybe survival to see if I can spot us? Because, you know, camping's not really my forte. Sure, I'll say um, whoever's up front can roll either survival or perception to try to find a, a spot for the night. Oh, perception all day, every day. Oh, yeah, good. Let's make the guy that's never worked a day in his life roll. Mm -hmm. I'm not camp. saying I never worked a day in my life. I'm just saying I never worked a day in my life. <laughs> so <laughs> you, uh, you travel along for about half an hour or so, kind of trying to keep an eye out for, like, the little... Um, the the waystones that mark different uh traveling points along this trade road um and you're keeping an eye out for like another sign of those like little campsites and you know roadside stops that seem to be somewhat common along this major highway uh but unfortunately there were none that you remember in the last couple of hours at least and you don't see any as you're kind of approaching along um it seems like the tracks um on this part of the road become a little less worn. There's uh, there's not as many ruts. It seems like uh, people who travel along this, like the, the, the traffic on this stretch of road getting farther away from the, the capital city of Kadoria is the road less traveled. traveled. Yeah. Um, however, you are in pretty open terrain at this point. Um, you can see sort of off a bit, uh, to the like west northwest, you can see sort of a tree line, maybe uh, on the horizon. It's hard to say how far away, especially at this hour. But uh, you're in sort of like open rolling plains, and you find sort of a a rocky outcropping that at least kind of gives you a little bit of shelter from the wind. And you figure, eh, that's as good as you're probably going to find. Will you say we rest here for the night and? Uh... If you want, I can take first watch. I can take second. I can see in the dark. I guess I'll I take third watch. A good night of sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'll take third watch. You, you rest, brother yeah. Gregory. You, you had a, a rough hand dealt here. Can you gentlemen see in the dark? No. We can't. Wait, which one of us is a gentleman? <laughs> we're, we're the only two. It doesn't matter. No, we can't. Do we look like we can see in the so I can barely see in the day. Mm -hmm. But so, I have ears. How's the visibility at this time? Uh so you're starting to get into um like dim light territory. So you still have visibility, but it's it's fading fast. Would it be more plausible for the non-dark visioners to take first watch rather than last watch or vice versa? That makes sense, sure. So if you'd like, you can take first watch, and I'll take second, and Shad can take third. You don't mind if I call you Shad, do you? No, all my friends call me Shad. Does that make us friends? I like friends. I like that. Yeah, I like friends, too. I mean, yeah, if you want me to take first watch, that's that's fine. Sure, since you can't see in the dark. I mean, you keep drilling that point home. Yes, I can't see it. Have you I tried opening your eyes? I have, but you know, it's also very dark. My iris can only get so big. Interesting. <laughs> I look at Shanna. Silly humans. <laughs> I've been known to do some eye work if you'd like me to take it. No. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, gold. 
All righty. So you guys set up a rudimentary camp, um, kind of pulling the wagon off the main road for a little bit, sheltering against this rocky outcrop. Uh, so I believe Isaac has the first watch. Yes. All right. Isaac as, as the rest of you bed down, uh, some of you in, you know, standard sleeping bags, others a meditative trance, some curled up in a little ball. Um, go ahead and make a perception check just to kind of keep track of your general surroundings. All right. Uh, uh, unless there's anything else specific you'd like to be doing during this watch, or are you just kind of... I want to see if I can whip a leaf off a branch. Easy enough. Whoosh. And here I was going to do and challenge someone to do a game of dice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With surprising accuracy. Whoosh. All right. Uh, yeah, that's about the extent of my yeah. shenanigans, I guess. I'll All right, go ahead and roll a perception. That hasn't been like that the whole time, has it? <laughs> whip, whip it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> Just kidding. Mm -hmm. All right. Over the next, let's see, three watches. So over the next two and a half, three hours or so, as the sun begins to set and eventually fades into night, um, you're keeping an eye out, staying alert. Um, you do hear a, what sounds like maybe a little bit of foot traffic on the road, because you guys are a little bit of a ways away from the road. Um, and you kind of look, and it seems to be like a lone wagon just kind of passing. Not really. They, either they didn't notice you or they didn't pay you any mind, but they're just continuing to travel. Um, maybe finding their own spot to make camp for the night, you'd imagine. Um, but they're actually heading the opposite way that you are, so they're kind of but it okay. seems like they're crossing in traffic. Um, it doesn't raise any kind of nothing hinky about them. No, yeah, no, 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 in the caravan. The, no spidey sense is kind of alerted, but just something that okay. you notice. Other than that, your your watch is pretty uneventful. What about my squirrel sense? Your squirrel sense? Yeah, that's my spirit um, animal. I don't have ducks; they're not in a row. I have squirrels, and they're at a rate. Unfortunately, the squirrels in this area are mysteriously missing. Just, just give them disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Negative one inspiration. <laughs> oh, the, the squirrels are missing, and it, it's that causes some alarm. No. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, no. so as you 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 gather about two and a half three hours is up, you figure you're getting pretty sleepy. It's about time for you to wake up the next person. Yeah, right. Um, I'm from God. Who, who's second watch again? Was it Shad or Shiana? I forget. Which one are you gonna wake up? Uh, I think it was Liana had second watch. <laughs> uh, shoot. Uh, both of them I don't want to, like, rouse because they're going to hit me or claw me or stab me in the eye. Jeez. Uh, I guess I'll... Should I whip one gently from a distance? Like a light little... <laughs> How does one whip someone gently? <laughs> I don't know. Physics? Uh, I guess I'll... Uh... Rouse, uh, Shad? No, Shiana. Shiana. That final answer. Right. You, you gently wake Shiana, and Shiana, you, as a Shadar Kai, you actually don't sleep, per se. It's more of a meditation. Yeah, so you are semi yeah, so just kind of like... You can see him kind of like walking up, like holding the whip kind of suspiciously, and that's enough to kind of rouse you from your, your trance. What are you doing? Uh, second watch? Oh, is it that time already? It is. Did you see anything? No, of course you didn't see anything. You can't see. Just wow. go to sleep and... Wow. Don't wow. worry. I, I'll, I'll take... Did you Did you see anything, though? Yeah, the wagon went that away. Anything good on it? It was the wagon. There Excellent. were people. I don't know. What, define, what do you think is good? Do you like shiny objects, or are you hoping it was a... I mean, look, there's things about me that you wouldn't understand. I probably wouldn't. Just Not at go all. To, just, just, just go to bed and I'll, I'll take watch. All right, all right. I'm going to kind of go trudging towards my bed, muttering under my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ooh, okay. are you taking another rest and putting him on a second watch? What do you mean Is that another rest? No, no, no. I'm I'm sending him to bed. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, so Shiana, as as uh, Isaac beds down, falls asleep, is there anything specific you'd like to be doing during this this little three hour period? Um, I want to keep an eye out, but I also want to open up that little box. See what's in. Okay. So about half hour into your watch, you get curious enough. And I, I was I was trying to make a cat pun there, just uh, too late. Uh, and uh, Cats out of the bag, the box. Curiosity the box. cured the cat, you know. Uh, Satisfaction brought him back. I'm not a cat. You, you open the. I know I was cats. You open the. <laughs> the tabaxi derailed the campaign. Uh, yeah. It's like having a brass dragon line, copper you dragon line for it. You have cat to be kidding me right now. He's a copper. Right. So you you finally open this small little jewelry box, and inside is like a chicken wishbone, like a little kind of forked bone. What the fuck? Yeah, looks like a little maybe lucky trinket or something. Sweet, I will. Uh... Hell, I'll put that with the skin and with there the you eyeball. go. Oh. All right, God, that's gonna smell so good in like six <laughs> hours. All right, and go ahead and roll me a perception check for me. All right, fifteen. Man, um, I'm better than you with my human eyes. So you've got oh, the you've got the midnight watch, and so as the darkest part of the night happens, um, your elven eyes are kind of attuned to this, and so you stay pretty alert. Um, you can hear a little bit of like standard wildlife, you know, uh, bugs chirping, stuff, uh, you know, a little skittering, but nothing that kind of again spooks you really. Um, just standard, you know, nighttime wildlife noises. There's no large crashes in the woods or, you know, growls in the distance. Um, pretty uneventful. Excellent. Uh, and as about three hours passes, you know, you're pretty bored, but you figure it's been about enough time. I'll go and wake up Chad, my newfound friend. All right. She just she does like the cat stretch as she gets up. <laughs> uh, anything of note? Nothing in particular, but before uh, I continue to meditate, do you know um, what this symbol is at all? And I'm going to pull out the little skin with the tattoo on it and show her. How would you like me to roll the DM? Uh, actually, um, you don't have to roll anything. You immediately recognize. It. Oh yeah, that. Um, this is actually um, it's kind of like a hobo symbol, uh, equivalent of thieves' cant. And this particular marking actually signifies, amongst a lot of um, sort of roguish or underworldy communities, uh, it's the sign of a coward. And usually people are branded with a mark similar to this before they're kind of excommunicated from a guild or something like that. So I didn't recognize the gentleman, but he was a part of the Thieves Guild. I don't think he was part of mine. Uh, but usually when you do something cowardly, like, you know, try to run away in a battle or something we would stamp you with that so that way if you tried to join another guild they would know what you what you are in the heat of the moment do you have one of these markings as well she pulls up her sleeves nope i mean it was behind his ear not on his forearm so i nope <laughs> All right, so it's of no use, and I'll just kind of throw the patch of skin off into the breeze. All right. <laughs> and uh, nothing uneventful, so uh, enjoy the rest of the night. I guess I'll uh, meditate. Wake me if you need something. All right, will do. All right. Uh, Shadow in the Whispering Woods, is there anything specific you'd like to do with your uh, sun salutation rest? Yes. Uh, so... First off, are there any trees like in our like immediate area where we're camped out? You said it was kind of open, so yeah, I'd say like within like a like a two minute walk, there's like a small tree. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty I was, I was open. Kind of crawling in 
as a, like a vantage point, but if it's two minutes away, that's too far. It, yeah, it's, it's that's fine. Um, I just want to kind of be on the lookout for any type of like small animal that I could potentially kill for breakfast, like a squirrel or a rabbit or. Okay, mice. go ahead and make me a perception check. All right, so you're kind of perched in the way that cats sit, kind of like eyes dilated, fully in hunter mode, scanning, um, searching for prey. And you see off in the distance a small little field shrew kind of skittering and running. And you wait for the right moment to pounce as it gets close enough. And just as you kind of do that little butt wiggle, and as you're about to pounce, you hear the flapping of wings and a rush kind of goes over your head off into the distance up up somewhere high and you look and you can see maybe it's kind of cloudy maybe you saw something kind of flying past hmm. it was it was pretty quick yeah. um you you were just shy of the dc but you you definitely noticed something that was weird and i'm assuming at this point i turn back to the yeah. This is just about at, at sunrise, so it's it's maybe like like the the sun is kind of like just starting to to mm. crest over the horizon. Okay, so it distracted me. I did not get the uh, animal either. Unfortunately, not. I just sigh and I just sit back down, kind of in the center of camp. All right, this is a beautiful sunrise. Um, it's a little bit obscured by you know, kind of like the morning haze and like clouds and stuff, but it's the, 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 the way the clouds rise, it's this beautiful kind of like pinkish purple color. It's you enjoy it. It's, it's nice to watch the sunrise. Mm. And eventually your companions all eventually stir from their slumber and you guys are uh, full rested. So you can restore any spell slots, uh, regain any hit dice. Uh, you're back up to full HP, all that good stuff. Hooray. Mm -hmm. All righty. And you're beginning your third day of travel. So according to schedule, um, you should be arriving in Silvertown by nightfall. I guess we'll just pack up and head off on our way, unless anybody wants to do anything while we're here. Yeah, basically, unless we try to move the horses a little bit faster than normal. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you, did you want to drive now that you're well and good? Oh, I don't mind driving. It's whether or not the horses will let me now. That's completely up to you. I, I, I insist. What was that, Jen? Sorry. I just said, well, one kind of sort of tried to protect us. Mm -hmm. And then I give it a nice little pat again. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why there's mistrust. I mean, if Sir Brother Gregory would like to drive the horses he may, but if you're having fun with it, Shiana, then by all means, please. Why don't you go ahead and drive? I'll just, you know, ride shotgun or passenger. I'll ride crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, I will ride crossbow with the crossbow ready. Nice. It's completely right. up to you. I don't want to steal your thunder. And I mean, but to be honest, horses are kind of a drag. No, I'll let Shadow drive. It's fine. All right. So then I'll hop in the back of the cart and hang out with Isaac. Okay. All right. I will hang so, out, out back here too. Uh, so just for reference, as I'm setting up the next potential map, uh, so we've got Shadow driving. Yep. We've got um, Brother Gregor up front riding, riding crossbow. Yep. And we've got... Uh, Isaac in the back, and we've got in the back. All right. Excellent. So, as you're traveling along, uh, I would like the driver to make me an animal handling check for me, please. Go, Jezebel, yeah. go. Yeah. My name is the great one, Jezebel. <laughs> All right. Jezebel turns back and goes, it's Craig. No. Um. <laughs> They're all Gary. Gary 1, Gary 2, Gary 3, Gary 12. Mm -hmm. 
Wait, what happened to Gary's four through eleven? We don't talk about that. <laughs> uh, um, as you're as you're driving the horses along, kind of going at that canter pace again, um, you kind of skirt around in sort of a wide sleeping arc, having passed the river uh, around the howling wood, uh, kind of keeping it in the distance, and you come to sort of the the western sort of stretch of your journey. Um, and you can see the terrain goes from these, these rolling hills to a bit more kind of craggy, rocky, cliff-like in area. And the road kind of begins to narrow as occasionally you have to steer the horses and the road becomes sort of uh, one cart wide as you have to kind of go through some of these natural uh, crevices in the terrain. Okay. I'd probably slow them down at this point just to kind of okay. navigate the... Pull the e-brake. Yeah. yeah. All right. Whoa, just a bell. Whoa. Yeah. So coming down to like a sl nice slow trot, um, you get to a point uh, where the road sort of narrows in between some rather rough terrain. Um, and let me move you guys to this map. Project, um, the map. Um, the map. Um, should have named it Dora. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. Look how fancy that is. So it's about, uh, I'd say 10, 11 in the morning or so, um, getting into late morning as you arrive at this spot. Um, and I would like everyone to make me a perception check, please. Even us in the back? Yep. Okay. I mean, someone's got to watch from the rear. Wow. That's... Double, oh, lucky. double tens. Mm -hmm. I don't even have an answer for that one. Yikes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that 16. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. All right. So, and then we just need one from... There we go. All right. So... Can you see uh, in the daylight, Shiana? Is it too bright for you? <sighs> what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Are we supposed to be looking for something? I'm not driving. Mm -hmm. So as you guys are having this conversation, everyone who rolled above a 10, so everybody except uh, Shiana, hears this, ah, this loud screech and the beating of wings as something quickly moving rushes over the treetops across the road and kind of goes up to this sort of higher terrain over here. Um, and you can see... Uh, do a little... DM trickery. Uh, flying up towards the ridge is this massive winged creature uh, with sort of the body of a lion and the head and wings of an eagle. And it seems to have like uh, horse's hooves just sort of flying and it kind of comes and crashes into the treetop at the top of this cliff here. It's pretty big. Was there a young wizard riding it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, those oh, who roll no. above a 10, <laughs> go ahead and roll me a, a nature check, if you'd like. Who, who does a nature check? Sorry. Uh, everyone who in. rolled above a 10 on oh, their percent. Everybody sorry except you. No worries. Nature. I am not very nature-y, but we'll try. What's a tree? <laughs> I, okay, I was going to say, I did. Yeah, what is tree? All right. Um... Shadow and the Whispering Winds, you've heard of these creatures before. You know that they're pretty dangerous. This is a griffin. And judging by it, you guess that it's a male. And you think, kind of making the connection, this is probably what you saw earlier this morning. As it screeches, you all hear this as there's a second, louder, deeper screech. And coming up over the ridge is another one. This one seemingly, the coloration is slightly changed, but this one seems a lot much larger, and the plumage is a lot uh, darker, uh, and it seems to be a little bit more beefy than the other. As it flies up over the ridge, you see its head tilt down towards you guys. I need y'all to roll initiative. No. I, I'm fairly certain you built this campaign thinking there'd be six of us, now there's four. Yep. It's okay. I'm awesome. Yeah, that I'm would explain that why awesome. the bandits were uh, really, really hard. 
Uh, so Ooh, you... how we got this? Oh, I was supposed to click on my character again, wasn't I? Shit, sorry. I keep not doing that. It's okay. Um, here, I'll get you guys set up. Uh, let me just get my griffins rolled real quick. No, I'm liking the griffin at a zero. Me too. Uh, so he is. Oh at... damn! Wow, we got a lot of fittings. Yep. And then the uh, they're gonna go simultaneously because I'm lazy. Um, I'm also going to roll an initiative for the horses. Oh, make sure they don't freak out and take off. No way, the true MVPs of the party. Yeah, yeah. Getting. We'd oh, like that's... to see reoccurring horses in future games. They win the vote. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, people. Yes, vote the horses for MVP. We'll understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so is everybody in? I've got an Isaac. I've got a brother, Gregor. I've got a... Uh, I do not have a Cheyenne with an eight. I'll add you. Uh, I think we just lost Cheyenne temporarily. Yeah, oh. just a BRB. Okay, no worries. Rolled low enough, I guess. Yeah. Alrighty, let me move this out of the way. Okay. Uh, Wee Woo, do you know how to make the initiative? Sh does the initiative show up when I roll it on Twitch? I guess I can just look at the. Yes, it does. Yeah, okay, it beautiful. Um, cool. All right. So at the top of the initiative, as you see uh, these two griffins, the, the mated pair, kind of coalesce at the top of this little small hill uh shadow you have the initiative i really want to take the horses and just try to book it try to just speed them on i don't know why i jumped off the wagon i can't get back on the wagon Come it's on. okay i got you there you go there we go um yeah i kind of wanted to just spur the horses oh crap i just accidentally got out of the game um and just kind of try to just rush past these guys. Okay, so you're just going to kind of yaw on the horses, use yeah. your action to... Okay. Um, I use my action to yaw. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and roll me an animal handling check once you're loaded back in. Uh, I think I'm back in. Getting there. There we go. There we go. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can sense the, the, the panic in the horses and you're trying your best to speed them on, but at the same time, maintain control. We're going to see what happens when it gets to the horse's turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other movement? Nope. I'm going to just okay. stay at the reins and just try to kind of hold on and keep control. All right. Um, All right I think Isaac would go before me just because I have the worst decks. <laughs> Okay. Um, I am a fan of kind of wombo. I mean, it's level one, so your wombo combos are kind of limited, but definitely, uh, I will say, like, rule of cool stuff, like creative uses of help actions and things like that, especially on tied initiatives, I tend to be a little bit more favorable to that. So if you guys can get creative and do something simultaneously, now's the chance. Uh, well, that's interesting. So let's see, Isaac and Shadow have literally the same decks. Uh, so is there a combo we can pull off at the same time? Yeah. Uh, if not, you guys can decide who goes first. Uh, it's a little, I can't really think of anything at the moment. I, uh, I it tell depends you what. on how loud a noise I can make with Thaumaturgy to try to scare the horses along you know down what? the road. Thaumaturgy can get that's pretty loud. That sounds like a great idea. So this is the combo I'm going to recommend. I'm just going to pull my action in case they bum rush us. Uh, I think I'm going to ready an arrow from my bow. So okay. Because so the way I kind of like think of it, like on the wagon there, I'm kind of like poking out in the middle between them with an yeah. arrow knocked. So if they do decide to come flashing at us, I can just fire a shot at them. Okay. So you're holding, uh, you're holding a longbow attack in your trigger when the griffins get close. Yeah. If, if if they come close in what appears to be an aggressive fashion, not like, hey, what's this? Is like fucking dive bomb this mother. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. Gotcha. All right. Uh, and Brother Gregor, what are you doing? Uh, I'm thinking, you know, if I want to use Thaumaturgy to try to scare the horses to kind of get them up and moving down the road more <laughs> away from the griffins. Uh, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We lose control of them. We die Kind of like we're going to in a minute. <laughs> we die horribly. Or we die horribly. 
it's only that you know it won't be the first time today well it would be the first time today but not this it week. would be the first time today yes <laughs> yeah so i'll go with it i'll go with thaumaturgy to make like kind of a nice loud like thunderclap next to the horses okay about there all right sounds good <laughs> there's this loud rolling thunder and you can kind of hear the horses <laughs> and, uh... make all the door windows open up real big yeah. They, uh... No, I'm not being jester, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> glad you got it. All right. Glad you got it. All right. The horses definitely take notice of this sudden sound. And as composed as they are, they, given this current situation, are seeming to be in kind of a panic. All right. Any movement or staying on the cart? Um, If Shadow is still at the reins, I'll leave her there. Otherwise, I'll you know get ready to grab them. No, I'm okay. not that I can do it with casting thaumaturgy at the same time, but all right. Actually, you could because thaumaturgy is only vocal. Um, yep. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, it is a casting time one action bit that was throwing me off. All right. Yeah. So you're kind of like simultaneously like trying to help contain maintain control of the horses. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Shiana, if you are with us, go for it. Is have I seen like? The griffins and all that? Because I know my perception um, role wasn't. I'd say at this point you're all aware of the griffins. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. They made enough of a flashy entrance to, like, oh shit. Yeah, you guys are all aware. So I'll just I'll hold a ray of frost. And okay. if one of them if one of them seems to swoop in to attack either us or the horses, once they're in range, I'll uh, let it loose. So we okay. can kind of combine fire, or focus fire, I should say. Right. Okay. Make my arrow frosty and punch it through its throat. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, the griffins are going to swoop in and attack with their movement speed of 80 feet. Swoop, shoot, so, ba-doop, swoop, ba-doop. So this one's going bad, to... Bad, Rudy. Bad. <laughs> swoop down from the high ground. Claws extended. Going for he the, has the high ground, we can't win. Run away. <laughs> Going for the no. gray horse. Um, if you guys would like to, definitely aggressive. Um, I would like to use my action that I was holding. Yeah. Okay. Too. Go for it. Bam. All right. So go ahead and roll to hit, uh, Wolf. Um, there you go. Twenty three definitely hits. Go ahead and roll for damage. And the longbow also definitely hits. Did it pop up? Uh, didn't pop up for me. If you just click on that word Ray of Frost, it should pop up. I'm working on it. Uh, so it's just 10. It's not... I would yeah, have to take it. All right, so 18 points of damage total. Nice. As this griffin comes in and... Uh, oops, sorry. 59 minus 18. There we go. Okay. Um, comes in, takes the assault, but seems driven. Uh, it's a going to attempt to grapple the horse. No, Gary. Three? That's 12. Wait, no, no, this is a gray horse. This is Jezebel, isn't oh, it? Jezebel. Yeah. Gary, yeah. One. Gary 12. All right. So the horse, <laughs> the horse is going to attempt to resist. Um, did that roll pop up? Not on ours. Roll but I don't think yours have been popping up on ours. You, well, I have the Griffins rolling in secret, but the... Come on, Pony Boy. There we go. Okay. Golden pony so, boy. Hey, golden. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, this Griffin flies down, grabs the back of Jezebel with yep. both claws and whiffs and begins to fly away. Uh, not getting super far because of it, the distance it took to get there, plus... Uh, dragging a horse plus um, the wagon. array of frost. So it can only move about 10 feet and that way. But it's it's starting to get lift with uh, with Jezebel. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. I knew I shouldn't have named the horse. <laughs> as soon as you named it, I was like, oh, yeah, they're definitely attacking this one. <laughs> All right. Um, Mama Griffin Real is going to fly her 80 feet um, and she can only get about here um so just a little bit shy of 
the horses, but seeing you guys kind of pepper her mate, she kind of flaps up a little bit and she's actually going to take the dodge action. So she's going to kind of take evasive maneuvers. I mean, right. I mean, am I going to be that jerk who says, let them have the horse and maybe we get out of this alive? Mm -hmm. Aren't the okay, horses about... all attached to each other? Which is attached to the Yeah, truck? they are kind of all attached to yeah. each other. Yeah, so this oh, griffin was actually... I know what I'm going to do. The griffin was actually strong enough to tear and break this horse's out of its uh, hitch. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so the gray yeah, horse is detached. Um, the horses are going to panic. Uh, bringing all of you along with them, they're going to move 40 feet. So about there, right under that tree. Thank you. There are uh, no seatbelts in here. They're <laughs> just absolutely uh, hooking. I will say, those in the back, if you want to use your reaction to bail, you can do so and stay. No, fuck no. There's danger out there. I'm staying in here. Yeah, I'll stay in as well. All right. Uh, top of the initiative, Shadow. Sobbing quietly. <laughs> and that her favorite horse was taken. She is just going to try to regain control of the horses at this point. Okay. Uh, I will say, go ahead and make this roll with advantage, just because uh, Brother Gregor was kind of uh, aiding you at the end of his turn. okay yeah the horses are in like full-on panic mode and due to like the uh the lopsided of it this of it now uh like you're kind of veering towards the right because you have more horsepower on the right and so you're trying <laughs> to compensate and it's it's getting a little rickety um it's getting to the point where it's getting a little scary to be riding on this carriage as a note Nope, this um, is what makes me feel alive. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm just realizing that all three of you guys are at 15, so I'm so sorry that I didn't incorporate Shadow into the Wombo Combo. Yeah. Um, uh, so Isaac and Brother Gregor, simultaneously. Um, man, these horses are really fucking going ballistic. Uh, I'm going to just re knock another arrow and kind of like hang out the back and wait, see if another griffin's coming at me. And if the whole carriage looks like it's going to go fucking ballistic, I'm just going to be like, nope, I'm out. See ya. Okay. Yeah, pretty much my job was going to be try to get the animals, on, get the horses back under control. Um, yeah, but if we start heading towards a ravine... I can roll again for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I roll animal handling again, or because Shadow already did, we're kind of sunk? Um, I'll give it to you. You go ahead. You guys are kind of like fighting over the reins at this point. Like, no, me, no, just full on panic. Just about why. All right. I don't know why, but the roll clicks are not going through for animal handling right now. Yeah. Mine was kind of laggy too. Yeah. I will say the initiative one was pretty laggy. Yeah. Um, there we go. There, oh, there we go. Yeah. All it's right. got a bit I'll of latency. Take, I will take that 20. Um, so, yeah, you kind of like grab the reins and manage to compensate and get them back at i mean they're still panicking but you're at least now heading along the road as opposed to like potentially off of this small ravine so instead of oh, going yeah, in the plan is to just guide them direction. back to the road mm -hmm. yeah at the speed they're going, See, they're going yeah and you've accomplished that he's holding his his arrow knocked okay uh shayana hi can I aim a ray of frost like at the griffin's foot to see if I can get him to drop the horse? Yeah, go for it. It'll probably kill the horse at this point, but sure, why not? I mean, it might be better than being devoured alive. Ooh, unfortunately, trying to you kind of take precise seat, you fire and it goes a little bit wide. Unfortunately, that's a whiff. Um, uh -huh. Staying along for the That's ride? It. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay right where I'm at and just All keep right. going with the host. I tried. Yeah, a valiant effort. All right. Uh, this Griffin is going to. It got what it wanted, so it's gonna fly. It's no, just you. Come on. It's gonna fly. It's uh forty feet of movement. 
back up towards the nest. So right on that little spot there. Peacing out with the horse. Uh, and as it's flying, it's actually kind of gaining altitude. So the horse is like slowly drifting further and further from the ground. Uh, this one's no longer dodging because it's its turn now. But it's looking angry and hungry. Um, it's going to fly down and swoop towards uh, you, Shadow. And as it does so, uh, that would provoke the triggered attack. Seventeen, sir. Seventeen hits. I'll be eight points of piercing, sir. Nice. Okay. A, a, a solid hit, but it seems determined. Uh, so it's going to come at you, Shadow, and it's going to make two attacks. Okay. Uh, the first attack is with its claws. Uh, that's a fourteen to hit. That equals. Okay, so you take uh eight points of slashing damage. Okay. Wow. And the beak attack. Ah, shadow. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Beak attack, please. Ah, Felicia. Mm -hmm. Come on, roll twenty. Okay, that's a that's a six to hit. Okay, that misses. That misses. Okay. All right. The horse's turn. This is going to get interesting. Um, I'm going to move him Come away. Come on, Jezebel. <laughs> Break free. <laughs> uh, the horses are going to move their forty feet. Right about there. And they're kind of straightening out a little bit. There we go. Good enough. Um, Jezebel is going to attempt to break free uh, with a strength check. And the griffin's going to make its strength check. 16's pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, that griffin is, is hellbent. They're hungry. Uh, can't quite break free. All right, Sh top of the initiative. Uh, the three of you in sim in in sync. What would you like to do? Uh, I would love, if possible, to. Hmm. Could I? The Griffin's close, right? Uh, the Griffin's pretty close. You're kind of like booking it along the way. Um, How far away, bud? The you one that are... took an attack at uh, Shad. Uh, I thought was, was... Was... Did he like come down, swoop, and then fly away, or is he still kind of hanging out in this? He, he's about like 25, 30 feet away from you at this point. Okay, that's the one that chomped the cat? Yep. All right, yeah, I'll just... Unless anybody has something else, I was just going to shoot at it. Uh, so... At this point, Brother Gregor has the reins, right? Because you were yep. yeah, I'll have the reins. It's fine, fine. I kind of look at him. I want to do an acrobatics and try to jump onto the horse that's directly in front of me, and then cut the horse that's in front that's kind of making it lopsided. Cut it away with my dagger. Cut like the reins away uh, that's hooking him up to the horse behind him. All right, I will say that's a pretty acrobatic feat. But you can certainly try. It's going to be a relatively high DC, but it's doable. You're a badass. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, nope. Uh, that roll was so bad, you killed the DM. Quick, we roll. Oh <laughs> we killed him again. Oh, crap. You guys hear me? I yeah. can now. Can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we can. So, all right. Sorry about that. Um, it's all good. I rolled so, 13. Yeah. So you jump on the horse's back and kind of like start to slide a little bit and you panic and kind of grab onto the actual horse's mane, unfortunately, just out of desperation and manage to get yourself back up in the saddle. I will say due to that roll, you can make an attack against the, the hitch attaching the front horse, but the attack is going to be a disadvantage. Okay. So you, you, you managed to get a shot at this. Mm -hmm. With the 13. All right. Give a shot. Yeah. And you just wow. quick little slice and uh, this horse, I'll move it up just a smidge to indicate that it's free now. Uh, you managed to detach it from the hitch. All right. Awesome. And you are now about there. Okay. 
uh, I'd say that's a pretty, pretty full, complete action movement real cool yep. combo thing. So I'll say that's the end of your turn. Yep. Uh, Isaac and Brother Gregor? I'm going to hold my action. I'm going to put the bow away uh, or set it down, however you wish to word it, sling it, and get my whip ready. So if the griffin tries to swoop in, fly away with Shad, I'm going to be like, no, and try to yank her back. Okay. Um, I'm going to move over here. Up gotcha. Gregor. Okay, so you kind of climb through the flap. Yep. yep. Okay. And you got the whip kind of yep. ready to go. Cool. Uh, and Brother Gregor? All right. I'll uh, see. So I already had the crossroad in my lap anyway. I'll just put the reins in my mouth for a minute and take a pot shot at the one with Jezebel with my crossbow. Way up there? Okay, go for it. That's assuming I have range. Hold on a second. I gotta uh, see where it's going to fall. It's about 55, 60 feet away. Oh, good. Still within yeah. you know, normal range. Thank God. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like just at the edge of that normal range, I'd say. Shooting at the male griffin. An 11, unfortunately, uh, the arrow kind of actually clips the side of the, the upward rising terrain there and doesn't manage to ca continue the momentum to pierce the griffin. It was worth trying. Yeah, worth a shot. All right, any movement or bonus actions? No, just after the shot, going to put the, you know, grab onto the reins again. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Elfie Wizard Girl. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to hold my action. If Mama Griffin wants to come towards us again, then I'll fire off a ray of frost. Sounds good. All right. Uh, let's see. Papa Griffin, 40 feet. I'll keep him on the map just for funsies, but he's flying off to go feed his babies or whatever he's going to do. Um, Mama Griffin is looking aggressive. Um it's going to fly and just kind of like swarm towards the cart. Uh, definitely aggressive. So as it gets about there, uh, you guys can use your ready to tax if you want. 20 definitely hits. For four. Cool. Nice. And the whip. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If he's within range, 10 Yeah, feet. definitely. Yep. You can kind of okay. catch a wing. Yep. He's a pretty big, big griffin, so. Hold on. It's just thinking really hard. Yep. 20 hits. Go for it. For another be six trip. lashing. All right. Uh, does not seem phased by the damage, but it's going to go and fly in and make an attack against you, Cheyenne. Just kind of like scraping and clawing with its talons, kind of just like at the side of the wet. Not so much like at you but like in your direction just kind of like wreaking havoc so i'm gonna give you half cover so you're gonna have plus five to your ac for both of these attacks or sorry three quarters cover so plus five yeah is my cam out it is yeah uh we will posted that because your cam's bugging it was to be there replaced by a red square but you better okay, there i better yep i was just unaware okay so two attacks against you uh Cheyenne, with plus five to your AC. All right. All right. So the beak attack first is a 15. Miss. And the claws are a 17. Miss. Okay. Uh, just kind of like tearing into the side of the, the wagon, uh, doing minor structural damage, but but not destroying the wagon completely. It flies in. We get our deposit back. <laughs> seems, pretty, seems pretty pissed off and angry. Uh, the horses are going to continue to bug. Uh, the horse in the front is no longer bound, so it's going to run its full 80 feet and just runs off the map off into the distance. Um, you guys are going to basically get to the edge of the map. So I'll move you out of the way. You guys are going to get kind of there. Uh, this is getting ugly. Okay, this horse... You are gone. Goodbye. You guys are all about there. And Mama Griffin was there. Okay. Top of the round. Oh, um, I'll give I'll give uh I'll give Jezebel one more shot to get out. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
So she <laughs> does manage to break out, but at this point, she's a good 30, 40 feet. Yeah, I was saying gravity's not her friend now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of thrashing and flailing, the male griffin loses its grip, and you hear the horrific thud as Jezebel falls kind of at the top of the mountain and rolls down a little bit. Probably, probably not good. I'm a horse. Uh, she killer, guys. isn't winning any races. Yeah. Um, Maybe it'll draw off the female Griffin. Maybe. Her name is now Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ouch. All right. So, top of the round, uh, the fantastic trio here in unison. All right. At this point, how in control are the horses? Are they still kind of just careening? Do we have a decent handle on them? You've got a pretty decent handle on them. Now that it's just the two, you're you're managing to kind of keep them steady. They're still booking it, so they're still moving their full speed. So I would like to pull a Wonder Woman and basically reverse myself, like in like so I'm facing like the back of like facing towards the carriage. Yeah. Ready with my short bow. Okay. Easy enough. And you're yeah, holding I'm just doing my job, keeping them going. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna hold action for the Griffin if the Griffin gets close again and lose it. Sounds good. Um, Isaac and Brother Gregor. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna keep the horses going as best as I can down the road okay. and as fast as they're going. Sounds good. Would you allow me to do the swap again, bow, or just hold an action for the whip? DM's preference. Oh, you can take a shot if you want with the bow. Okay. Yeah, I, I generally allow like one free weapon swap per per turn. Okay, then that's what I'll do. Yeah, I don't plan on doing a whole lot. Just yeah, just that's why I, I mean asked. it makes sense. It makes sense. All right, a uh, ten goes a little high, unfortunately. Boo boo! All right, that will be it for me, though, lad. All right, uh, Gregor, go ahead and make an animal handling check for me. All right, come on! Don't fail me now. Yep, yeah, you're you're maintaining pretty solid control, maintaining that quick pace. Um, you do notice that you're losing speed because you're down to two horses instead of four, but you're you're in control. As long as we're going faster than the giant flying scary things, we're good. Yeah. All right, uh, Cheyenne in the back. I am gonna hold. Another ray of frost in case she comes back at us again. Okay. And uh, that she does. Um, with one final sweep, she's going to fly uh, towards um, towards Isaac in the front so you guys can use your ready to tax. Nineteen. I'll give you the sneak attack on that. So you can go ahead and roll that extra d6. So that's thirteen points of damage. Nice. Um, the twenty-three definitely hits for another six points. All right. And um, Rudy was not holding an attack. Cool. Mm -hmm. So it flies and it's looking heavily wounded at this point. You can see visible wounds on its uh, under its underbelly. Uh, it's going to make one last desperate set of attacks at you, Isaac. So a beak and a claw. Okie doke. Uh, so the beak is a 25 to hit, natural 19. I mean, just barely. Just yeah. barely. Uh, so that's, a ten, <laughs> that's 10 points of piercing. Oh my god. And the claw is a 13 that's... to hit. Thank Christ. All right. I was, I was just Googling. It's like, is a bow a finesse weapon? Like, no, it isn't. <laughs> All right. Um, and that is its turn. Uh, the horses are going to continue to spur down the road. So at this point, we're going to get it to kind of theater of mind. Um, you guys are just kind of going straight down the road, mm -hmm. uh, putting a little bit of distance between you and the griffin, but the griffin's still kind of keeping speed. Uh, so shadow. Uh, so same thing. I'm just, I'm still seated backwards on the horse and I'm just going to knock another arrow. And if it gets close again, I'm going to take another shot. All right. Make me a dexterity saving throw as you're kind of like sitting in the horse backwards. It's not the most stable position. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Uh, Isaac and brother Gregor. I'm second winding. 
All right, bonus action to second wind. Yeah, because I've got two whole hit points. I have one. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we has heard it. Oh, thank God, seven more. Mm -hmm. All right, unfortunately, Shadow's out of reach, so I can't exactly heal her right now. Mm -hmm. In which case, uh, you know, why not? Sacred Flame on the griffin that's hanging out by right. us. So it's got to make a dexterity saving throw? Yep. Uh, that's a seven, so he fails. Nice. For five points of radiant damage, okay. Out of curiosity, is he with, is the griffin within 10 feet of me? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, then I'm going to just keep grab my whip and keep it out. Because it is finesse, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna need that I thing. Just, I should have just rolled an attack then, because I thought oh, I yeah, yeah. had been behind us again. Because after uh, we pulled it, it was behind. I'd say you guys are kind of like waiting. So as it comes to sweep again, yeah, go ahead and roll yeah. another sneak attack. Seventeen hits. Go ahead and add that to d six. Another thirteen damage. Nice. No, and no, no, no. a little thrown off with the fact that he almost yeah. tore my belly out. Yeah, that tends to miss, unfortunately. He's looking really she, sorry, is looking very rough. Um so that's all three of you guys. Shiana. Shiana. I'm gonna try to ray a prostate. All right, go for it. Ooh. The eight is a miss, unfortunately. No, it's a 60, and it's, it's actually the eight is the range. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the griffin is going to flap back and retreat. Clearly, uh, the juice ain't worth the squeeze here at this point. So she is going to fly away. Um, I will say... They're not really smart enough to disengage, so you can have an attack of opportunity if you want with the whip. I would love an attack of opportunity with the whip. Nope, not happening. Not feeling it. Uh, it threw off my whipping shoulder. Yeah. Kind of flies, and actually you see it swoop down, grab the horse corpse, and go and fly back up towards the mountain, and out of effectively out of range for you guys. Um, and I will clear initiative. Jeebus. All right, All so right. we're down two horses, and we haven't even made it to town yet. Yep. Level one. <laughs> Is it All possible right. for me to just, like, curl up into a ball and take a short rest in the back of the freaking thing? Yeah, of course. All right. You poor human, I'll take care of you. <laughs> All right, so you guys are down two horses, moving considerably slower. Spending a hit die. Yeah. As the, as the carriage goes along, if you'd like to spend hit dice, you can. Okay, um, I, I would like to get back on the carriage. <laughs> sure, easy enough. After a couple of minutes, the horses do calm down a bit and kind of get back to like still a quick pace, but um, they're not as panicked now that the, the griffins are gone. Max roll on the hit die. There you go. Back up to full. Sweet. At least the hit dice are rolling well. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, do we see the other horse at all? Sorry, I just click on that. I didn't mean to yeah. roll it. Uh, go ahead and make perception checks. Whoever's keeping an eye out for the horse. Can I see the horse from the back or no? Uh, go ahead and roll I'm perception. I'm pretty sure Shadow found the horse. <laughs> <laughs> I roll pretty good. So you actually hear it before you find it. And I rolled a percentile for this in the middle of that fight. Um, you find, I believe it was the the black horse. No, it was the it was the the, the other gray one. Yeah, the other gray one. It's you hear it neighing very loudly, as if it's in pain, and it's kind of walking along the side of the road, still away from you, with a pretty terrible limp. It seems like in the panic, it might have hurt its leg or broke its leg as horses are wont to do yeah. when they're panicking all right so how do you treat uh cure wounds in this case when it comes to healing stuff like that is it you know magically heal it or is it 
Mm. They just need to cover the damage, but it's still a little, you know, lame. I'd say roll a just roll a general. Wi- you're a cleric, right? So roll a general wisdom. Nope. Uh, maybe worth a shot. Yeah, why not? Let's try this. All right. Eleven points. You can see the horse visibly calms down, and it's. Walking, it seems like the wound is mostly healed, but that horse will forever have a limp. So, like, the, the actual fracture is healed, but it's still... Which, for horses... Eh. Um, but it's, it's, it's able to move on its own uh, accord now. Like, respectful, like, at a normal pace but it's definitely like you'd be afraid to kind of push it at this point yeah i think once we get things slowed down just kind of hitch it to the back of the wagon to at least get it to town and leave it there rather than in the woods all right hitch a horse to the back of the wagon well you know just just kind of like yeah like keep it tethered yeah tether it to the back of the wagon seems like dead weight to me I mean, what do you suggest? Horse steaks? Seems like it's griffin food at this point. I mean, it could be shad food. If that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, that's kind of the plan. Is it gonna be food for us or food for it? I suppose we can take it along. We might be able to exchange it for at least something. Fair enough. All right. Traveling for the rest of the day at a significantly slowed pace, um, just after twilight, you guys managed to get to the small mining town of Silvertown. And you can see there's uh, small little uh, lanterns glowing in the distance as you approach and come. It's got like a, a pretty lackluster wooden palisade around maybe... 15 to 20 buildings total here. Um, you can see they've got a small little mining operation going, but there does seem to be like a central tavern that seems uh, somewhat rowdy. Um, right. What do they, right. what do they mine in town? Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they, it does seem like the, the the miners at this point are done with their shift and they're they're relaxing in this this small rack and tumble tavern in the middle of town. As you guys slowly roll in. Do we see any guards or someone at the like standing at the palisades or No, not really. You roll you kinda just we're just rolling up into town, the gates are open, we're cool. Yeah, there's not even really a gate. It's more just like wooden like stakes kinda put in the ground that okay. like it, it looks like it could potentially be defended if it needed to be, but there's not really any sort of Guard here, per se. All right, I guess we should go find Scud. All right. What time it is? It? It's probably getting close to like eight p.m. Like it's it's borderline nighttime at this point. All right. Yeah, yeah. let's go find Scud. All right. Where would you guys like to look? The bar. When in <laughs> doubt, you always go to the bar. All right. Entering the tavern, it's pretty small and cramped, and there's like sort of a a haze of smoke and the smell of tobacco and uh, the smell of like sizzling meats cooking on the hearth. There's a bunch of apparently drunken, uh, mine, drunken miners. Wow, um, uh, <laughs> drunken mining workers uh, that uh, are apparently just relaxing. None of them really seem to pay you any mind. There's a, a tavern worker. Uh, seemingly a dwarven male kind of rushing and socializing as he's pouring drinks for the workers here. Alright, so I guess I would go up to uh, the tavern waiter? Barkeep? Whatever. Alright, kind of kind of gives you a wave as he's, you know, acknowledges your presence. 
uh, but seems to just be busy socializing with his friends over in the corner. We're uh, we're looking for a uh, dwarf named Scud. We have a uh, package to deliver from the Kidorian Adventures Guild. The barkeep kind of like nods at you and without breaking conversation with his friends kind of points to uh, a dwarf sitting at a table in the uh, sort of on the side of the tavern who's currently in a game of what seems like some sort of like a board game almost. Um, and a pint, if you'd be so kind. Uh, sure, that'd be like that'd be a copper. Uh, yeah, I give him a copper. All right, and he quickly pours you a pretty stale cup of ale. You know, you've got a drinking problem, right? I've had two drinks in three days. <laughs> we have had a very, very rough three days. That's As a matter of fact, uh, can I get three of those, please? And I'll just throw down a gold piece. All right. Takes it. Bites it. Thanks for your patronage. Yes, yeah, Squid's right over there. Uh, doesn't usually like to be interrupted during this game, but uh, you've got urgent business, which it sounds like you do. So, yeah, kind of shrugs. All right. Um, as you get closer, are any of you guys proficient in any gaming sets? I uh, am proficient in dice. In nope. dice. All right. I spend um, most of my time in a damn church. I'm not proficient in anything. Yeah. Um, I spend my guys... time gambling with soldiers. <laughs> um, so you would recognize this, although you're not super familiar on all the rules. This is Dragon's Chess, as he's sitting and uh, currently playing um, what appears to be another dwarf across the table. Uh, and they both seem very intent and focused on the game. I'm not going up there. I would like to observe it, though, see if I can determine what the hell's going on. Uh, sure, make me just a straight intelligence roll. Oh, yeah, I'd be pretty good at that. All right. Um, you don't really know how to play Dragon Chess per se, but you know enough to, to discern that Scud is wiping the Thor with this other guy, and you understand that it's a game of strategy, and it's sort of like a war simulation, and it seems like his opponent is in complete defensive mode and Scott is just sort of toying with him at this point. He's playing with his food. Uh, um, he kind of uh, moves one of the pieces and turns and goes, can I help you? Uh, Mr. Scott, we're uh, here from the Cadorian Adventures Guild. Um, we have delivery for you. Oi, you, you're with them short folk, right? Uh, <laughs> Not often we can call someone a short folk, but every chance I get, I'm going to take it. Uh, welcome to Silvertown. I'm Squid. Uh, one moment. Uh, that'll be checkmate, mate. And he holds out his hand, and the opponent kind of like whips out and like throws a small coin purse and gets up and storms away. Uh, so, yeah, I believe uh, I've got some goods for you to deliver back to Kadoria for that, uh, that tea leaf fella, right? Aye, that's what we were sent for. All right, and he got the proper paperwork. Paperwork? Wait, I think Shadow took that. Yeah, I don't I have that one. I don't remember taking it. It was given to somebody. It was, yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly didn't pick up any paperwork. I tried to distance myself from that. <laughs> I was staying as far away from that damn wolf as possible, so I don't know yeah. if I even really approached them, but... Shadow has it, right? Sure. I think Shiana has the, it, yeah. Here's the paperwork. Takes it, unfurls it. Hey, everything seems to be in order. All right, uh, you've got some sort of cart or something to load up the barrels. We do, but uh, we might need a couple more horses. We got attacked by griffins on the way in, and we lost two of them. Nasty buggers, uh, horse killers, eh? Uh, well, um, I'm sure we've got some horses we could sell to you if you're willing to pay. How much oh, are you much. offering? Well, if you're looking for horses that are strong enough to pull this load, uh, those are a rare breed around these parts. Call it uh, 70 gold a horse. I mean, can two horses do it? If we walk alongside the car? You gotta mm -hmm. remember, it's gonna, if it took us three days to get here with almost four horses... It'll probably take us five with two. Well, they They're not going to be going that much faster. 
They said within the week, so we got four days left. Oh, it's timed. That's right. And I'm not planning on turning back around. I'm going to take another sleep tonight. On a bed, not on a wagon. I mean, I'm feeling pretty spry. I do have money for a horse, but I'm really not trying to shovel out 70 gold. Would you take an eyeball by chance? I, uh, the hell? No, I'm not interested in your whatever the fuck that is. But I tell you what, it's you seem, uh, you got two of them in your, in your skull. You got two of them. I know what an eyeball is, mate, but I'm not, uh, you tell you I what. Mean, could we use Tilly's credit here? <laughs> to be fair, that's not a bad idea, but, uh, they're pretty new in the block and, um, to be honest, this is this is a trial run for us, so uh don't have quite enough reputation for that, but um I'll tell you what. Any of you feeling lucky? I mean No. Maybe based on the crap we went through to get here. Tell you what I've already been shot through the neck two days ago, so sure, why not? I'm a bit of a gambling man myself. I'll tell you what, I'll pay you. I'll, I'll play you for two horses. If you beat me in a game of dragon chess, I'll give you two horses for the price to one. But if I win, you're paying full price plus a little extra something. What's the extra something? Mm, we'll call it 10% off the top. I'm feeling generous. So... <sighs> It's going to be 154. Gold or 70 for two. Yep. Might as well give it a shot. Who's good at playing games? I mean, do we need to? We have the lame horse. It won't be as powerful, but it might help some. We do. Or would you like to trade a lame horse for a good horse? Do <laughs> you think I'm a fucking idiot, lass? Uh, lame horse is nothing good for a couple of burgers, maybe. I mean, I mean, really, what's the worst that happens? Perhaps if you win, we can do a job for you. Uh, I'll consider it. We've uh, been having a bit of trouble in the mines. I could put another order for that tea leaf fella. Yeah, sure. It's a done deal. And he puts out his hand. What do you say? Spit it. That's how they seal deals here, right? <laughs> Ew, Corona, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said the word. Uh, I'm sure. Not... All right, so the better question is, is who's actually going to play him? Does this look like a game of finesse, intelligence, uh, bluffing? Yeah, what is this? Um, so I will say this is a skill challenge, so it's going to be a, a, a series of three contested checks. I will say you can either beat him through, uh, deception checks and cunning, or you can beat him through raw intelligence checks. I'm out. Uh, deception and cunning or raw intelligence? Yep. It's it's kind of either the the straight intelligence roll to outmaneuver him, or the ability to bluff him enough to trick him into losing. Essentially, I mean, I'm decently smart. Which I'd say seems, that's either a rogue or a wizard. It seems weird for a wizard to say decently smart. I'm decently smart. <laughs> well, if it's bluffing, is it charisma or is it yeah. like sleight of hand? Yeah, it's basically it's, charisma or intelligence. It's, it's going to be deception or just straight list. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be me then. I'm I not guess it's me then. All right. I guess my intelligence over here is going to carry. All right. So go ahead and roll me just a straight intelligence roll. Because you are you're not proficient with with uh, a gaming set, correct? What's your... No, I'm not. Okay, so you don't get to add your proficiency bonus. Whoa, but what about Deacon? Oh, never mind. Yeah, You've no. No, I'm not the smart cleric. <laughs> We've covered this. <laughs> Ooh. That one. Okay. Uh, this let's... most valuable piece right here, right? right. I'm pretty sure you How managed I... to lose your own piece. You ate it. How do you play this game again? I can't seem to remember. King me. All right. 
Um, so for the first few rounds of this game back and forth, you're really not sure how to play this game. And you kind of make a move and he just kind of laughs at you. And within a few moves, uh, it seems like he's definitely got an edge on you. But you get the sense you're you're wise enough to to know that he's toying with you. So he's not taking full advantage of your failure. He's just being a dick. The White Lotus is the most important piece. Don't lose it. Yeah. All right. So uh, second roll. Go ahead. All right. He gets cocky. And in the process of him fucking around and messing with you, um, you actually start to pick up on some of his mistakes and capitalize on them. And he's too busy bragging. He's like half paying attention to the game, like drinking and talking to friends. And you manage to get back to a point where you're on pretty equal ground. Um, and it gets to the point where yeah, this this is anybody's game still. He rolled a natural one. Yeah. So is oh, there man. any way that I can aid by trying to distract Scud further sure. on his last roll? Uh, it's a risk. It's a risk. I would say you can make a whatever kind of skill check you are thinking of using to distract him, and that may or may not give a bonus to, to uh, Shiana. Depending on yeah, I'm trying to think what you're trying to do and what skill you're trying to use, that'll affect the DC. I don't. I am not a talkie. Um... <laughs> Jazz hands. Am I the place in the party right now? You're um, the brain. I think between the two of us, one of us is the face. I I'm not sure a, about the brain. A zero. Mm -hmm. Like I said, charisma is my dump score. I am not the talkie. I have a 12. I'm not built to be the talkie. Oh, so you're, <laughs> you're better than me with the talkie, though. Um, can I potentially do maybe a sleight of hand and... Who else, who else had the other dagger? I had a dagger. Who doesn't have a dagger? I asked for the dagger, and I kind of want to start juggling the two daggers. I don't know if that would be more acrobatics or sleight of hand. That'd be and more of like a... Do it, like, obnoxiously in front of him. Okay. Go ahead and make me a dexterity-based performance check. Um. So are you proficient in performance? I am not. So it's just going to be a straight dex roll then. Okay. How do I do it? just a straight dex? Uh, she's just, just going to uh, click on the word dexterity over yes. on the left-hand side. Yep. Okay. So you start juggling a couple daggers and actually drawing a little bit of a crowd. Um, let me make a roll on his end to see if he how distracted he gets. Um, mm. Unfortunately, it seems like uh, he's kind of like looks back after he sees you juggling and kind of looks back at the board and kind of focuses and realizes like, shit, I'm giving up a lot of ground here. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of focused on the game. So unfortunately it's not, it didn't hurt you, but it also didn't yeah. help, uh, help out, but good attempt. Good attempt. So you can make one last intelligence roll against his, if you'd like. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> I what really think that one today. That's not a five percent chance. That's, All right, we need this to, is to a find something to total up the rolls here. This Are you uh, guys? Guys, guys. Did you roll a one? I rolled a one too. <laughs> <laughs> what is so? In this case, who has the higher roll? He's got plus two. Yeah, so does. I got so plus two as tie. well. So it's a tie. So I will say it goes to sudden death. Oh boy. One more roll. I am continuing, I guess, juggling. <laughs> <sighs> okay. It's a long, drawn out, because of all the ties, it's a long, drawn out game, and it gets really nitty gritty near the end. And you're picking up on the rules and still, like, you, you make a couple mistakes and you slip up and, like, lose some key valuable pieces. This is five hour uh, Monopoly or six hour. Kind race. of, yeah. <laughs> And as the night draws on, you see a bunch of the patrons start leaving, but the ones who stay 
start to get invested in this game and you watch as a small crowd of fellow dwarves and miners watch this game and they're cheering and with bated breath every single move. And in a stroke of genius, Shayana, you realize that there's a piece that has potential that you haven't been fully tapping into. And in a trick maneuver, he rolled a five plus two is seven. You managed to best scud in a game of dragon chess, your first ever game beating the town champion and scud in his cups downs a beer. <sighs> God damn it. All right. You beat me fair and square lass. I gotta say it's not very often, but, uh, well done. So a deal's a deal. Uh, that'll be two horses for 70 gold. As I make the winning move, can I use prestigitation to just like do a little shing? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> and you actually get a round of applause and cheer from, from the dwarves who are, some of them you gather are excited to finally see this, this tool get his ass handed to him in his own game. So uh, you, you've nice. got the crowd uh, on your side. So who's who's got the gold for the horse? So all actually, chip I in. realized I never rolled for gold, so just ignore this roll for a sec. Sure. That was pretty shitty. It's plus ten. I thought it was times ten. It's times ten. Yeah. Yeah. Times yeah. 10. yeah. Okay, yeah. So that'd be. Yep. Yeah, you got a hundred gold. Okay. I'll just drop seventy on the table. All right. Oh, okay. I thought we were gonna split it apart, but sure. Yeah, we'll figure it out later. Yeah. Uh, so to expedite things, cause it is getting a little bit late. Um, Scud takes the gold, gets you two more draft horses, loads up the dozen massive barrels of ore onto your cart. And you guys or take what? ore. Uh, <laughs> um, this is a uh, reagent grade silver. It's uh, very useful for them. Artificer types, uh, make sure it gets back safe. And you guys manage to make it back to Kadoria in the nick of time with about 12 hours to spare. Um, Reginald Tealeaf is absolutely thrilled that you've completed your contract. Um, you guys all gain... Uh, he will compensate you for the price that you paid on the horses, by the way. So you get your 70 gold back. Um, each of you gains 75 gold pieces as compensation. And you are all level two, so we will level you guys up off screen. And sorry to kind of speed rush it at the end there, but good job, guys. You made it through your first contract. I can dig we it. Didn't die. All right. Hooray. Yay. All righty. Uh, Wee Woo, can you join us in the voice chat if you're available? Excellent. All righty. That was amazing, guys. I that was a lot of fun. It. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate was, you, Luke. Thank you. That was fun. Thank you. For sure. Yeah. All righty. Could have gone a couple ways. All righty. Uh, do we have... No we uh, tried. We, can we get we a um, a poll for crowd favorite? Yes, we can. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be at the top of the chat window, just because I don't want to do five or ten, obviously. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jezebel for MVP. <laughs> oh, you guys are good. Shiana. Shiana. My goodness. S H I A N A H. Alrighty. Uh, players, you can vote, but I ask that you don't vote for yourself, just out of an honor system. Or you can abstain from voting. It's up to you. I'll and I'm, I'm not going to vote because I get to pick my favorite. Go for oh, it. Oh, I'm definitely voting. Yeah. Did we just lose Wolf? I'm I think back. Oh, okay. he's there. Can we see?
Yeah, get those votes in, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna love watching those later. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh. It's evening out, guys. <laughs> There's a reason for it, you know? There is? Honestly, Wizard. I'm a little scared to find out the reason. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody, for, for hanging out, by the way. I appreciate yeah. the support here, guys. Hope you all had fun. Oh, oh definitely. I definitely had a blast, that's for certain. Uh, definitely. And our winner is Shadow in the Whispering Woods. All right. So, Shadow, you will have... Um... <laughs> oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, all of you guys have earned one tea leaf point for this adventure, this completed contract. And Shadow, you gain an additional tea leaf point. So you're at... Uh, Sweet. DM's choice? DM's Choice Award, drum roll, please. I'm going to give it to Brother Gregor for being a good sport. And, you know, it kind of sucks getting one shot in your first ever combat, but you seem to have a good time. You you it contributed happened, to the yeah, party. Don't worry. Um, you, you maintained your composure. You helped out with some key clutch skill checks. So you can also have an additional one tea leaf point. So as a reminder, uh, tea leaf points, especially for those in the chat too, um, are used for a variety of things. They can be used to increase your priority standing so you can play more often. They can be used to bid on magical items that are found during adventures, kind of like a DKP system from like a World of Warcraft sort of thing. Uh, so say there's a magical fiery dagger and two people want it. Whoever bids more key leaf points is the one who gets it, just to kind of keep it fair. And if you save up 10 of these bad boys, um, you can use them to get your own special backstory session. And you, along with five other people or whoever, however many show up, are going to do a little kind of quest like this centered around your backstory. So I'm going to talk with that person one-on-one, -on -one, kind of develop a story based off of their feedback, their input, and it'll be a good time. Right on, right on, right on. Yeah. Yep. So awesome job, guys. Um, uh, if you're comfortable leveling yourself up to level two, feel free to do so at your leisure. I'll double check everything again. Right um, if you need a little assistance, uh, I'll be available before next Thursday. So. Yeah, I'm probably going to just do level two in fighter until I hit like level six or so and then move into monk. Sounds good. Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody, for who watched. Thanks for all of my wonderful players. Thank you, Wee Woo, so much for being my man behind the curtain. Could not have done this without you. Um, Thank you, DM. Mm -hmm. What all we right. got? I'm Luke, the DM. It's my job to kill you all. Sure. Uh, my name is Tanuki Rudy, and I kind of just exist here behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Deacon. I'm probably not going to be streaming on my own, but hey, what the hell? <laughs> I'm Jmilio19. I occasionally pop in on some streams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wolf Among Sheep, Marvel's Champion. Occasionally I stream on my own. All right. Have a lovely night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. All right. Talk to you guys later. See you next Bye, Thursday, everybody. guys. See you guys. Oh, hey, dude. That's. <laughs> <laughs>